Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. Alright, let's do this. Hey everyone, welcome to 4 Player Podcast. This is episode 790. It is April 16th, 2023. I'm your host, Nick Henderson, joined this evening by Brad Simons. Hello! Nolan Hedstrom. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Crispy. Aloha! Oh, that's a new one. And Christopher Davis. Good evening. And uh, it's uh, it's 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 one of those weeks, right? We we didn't do a podcast last week. I also wasn't here for the festivities when you were playing. I heard y'all played some what was it? Content warning. Yeah, we had a fun time. Yeah, it was great. And uh, you missed it. Our bond and friendship deepened with each other. That was so good, though. That was so good. When I oh, but we'll talk about it on the show maybe. I I, I, was scotch. Do we have footage of content warning tonight? To, to go, kind. We of. have the footage kind we of. made in content warning. Oh, yeah. Sick. I know nothing about this game, so y'all are gonna You'll have to fill out. me in later. You better right. learn. A little bit of housekeeping before we get into it, guys. A uh, couple things. First, uh, we're gonna try something new this week. We're gonna we're gonna do fancy critic at the end of the show. So if you're here for the fancy critic, you're gonna have to hang around while we talk about video games. We'll get to all the updates towards the end of the show. Two, two. I want to let everybody know that I said I was gonna do it. Damn it, and I did it. I made a second video for 2023. My honorable mentions, the games that barely missed my list, and Chris Davis put this video together out of the goodness of his heart. Crispy smiling like a fucking school child. I'm watching. Know. I'm watching some of the clips from last week. <laughs> oh, he's ready to talk about content warning. Anyways, uh, um, my point is, uh, you know, whatever. I know everyone's moved. On, moved. 2023 is so last year. Nobody gives a shit anymore. But if you want to, they moved on it, halfway through January. I know. I know. And I did. The, I made this video mostly for myself. But if anybody is interested and wants to go watch it, I talk about a six more games on there. 2023 was a pretty, uh, pretty great year for me. So. If you're curious, go check it out. Would appreciate it. Leave me a comment. Would love it. But, you know, I don't have any expectations. It's fucking April. A sham. Nobody here cares about 2023 anymore, but I would appreciate it if you watched it. Uh, And lastly, I want to say... You don't care about Baldur's Gate anymore. You're number two No, I fucking care. I do fucking care, dude. Just make all the releases stop. Just make it fucking stop. Not to mention... So I was out last week because I had family in town... And you're choosing I, to play Japanese games over Baldur's Gate 3. That's the you, lowest of the low to you. You've driven me to this so, breath. <laughs> how, how much could you really love Baldur's Gate 3? Um, I hate you so much. Um, you've really derailed my entire intro here. I, I, what I was going to say, what I was going to say is, and I, I don't say this nearly enough, but if you listen to our show, if you like our show, please go leave us a review wherever it is that you listen to podcasts, if they have the ability to rate a show, leave a review for a show, please go do that. I don't encourage that nearly enough. Um, if you still use iTunes, which apparently is still one of the number one places Only you if can it's leave a good reviews. Review. Uh, can can, yes. can I be clear here? Yes. Only write a review if it's a good review, because the only person who reads these reviews are Nick. And if he reads yes. a negative review, he's going to like completely spiral. And no, 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 no. that's fine. Yeah. A lot of people do that. But like the thing is, it's not like the positive reviews are going to help us that much at this point. So just don't leave a negative review unless, well, I, unless it's a joke. Like if you want to be <laughs> go on there right now and write a really mean review, that might be funny. I always lean in the favor of comedy, but uh, generally speaking, 
don't waste your time if it's not going to be glowing. I mean, that's true. Right? That's true. That's really I mean, what we're trying to say. I mean, let's be real here, guys. Why do you think I'm moving Fancy Critic to the end of the show? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. it. I just, I'm just, I'm listening to the people, man. I'm just trying to listen to the people. But uh, if you want us to stop doing Fancy Critic, go fuck yourself because we still, yeah, we're having a good time. Fuck you. Yeah, it, give it two years and we'll be nothing. We'll just be a, it'll be a hundred percent fantasy critic. We get on here, we talk for a few minutes about fantasy critic, and then we bolt. That's gonna it's be so it. funny too. It's it's so funny too because when I when I got this idea to do it, I watched another like uh, group do it, and they did like a <laughs> they did a show at the beginning of the year, and they did a check in halfway through the year, and that was like all they talked about fantasy critic pretty much. I mean more or less, and. You know, I've since seen another a lot of other like shows do start doing fantasy critic, mm-hmm. and like still, it's just they no one talks about it as much as us. It's yes. crazy. So I don't know. I don't know why are they just lame. They don't get excited about fantasy critic. That's you know what, what makes it is. They probably special. don't have money. They probably don't have money on the line. You know, you got to have real dollary dues. Oh fuck, we still haven't figured that out. <laughs> No one gives a shit. I think we, I, I think we all we just agreed to do what we did last year. That we were doubling always, it every year. Conclusion that. Well, we're we're gonna do some other did, things. I don't, we didn't double it, but I think the conclusion we came with on the spot was just to repeat what we did last year. Well, but yeah, we've yep. collect, collected no money or anything. Anywho, so. the point is, the point is, if you oh, if you'd be oh, so sorry, inclined, we did agree to a second place and a second place something that we didn't yes. agree on and, I, and 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 there's going to be some community involvement i think with kind of coming up with that that prize and what that's going to be yeah. and we will have those conversations i swear um but n- that's neither here nor there i do again we're going to talk about fantasy critic at the end of the show this week but um as far as reviews go please i just don't say it enough and it's one of those things where it's like when you go on there even if it's whether it's a good review bad view whatever like if you go on there and you just don't see any like newer reviews that's off. That's like that's kind of a bummer in its own sense. So just like you know, we need some. We've been doing this for a long time. There's you know I haven't encouraged it for a while. If you go leave us a review, we'd appreciate it. Um, and also Google Podcast. Remember how uh, Chris Davis, you were like, uh, well I don't think tomorrow it's just Google Podcast is gonna just stop working. That's almost exactly what happened. Mm-mm. The day they said they were. In, it it's it stopped. Maybe it was like two days after or something. It was pretty quick. It was not like. The, the grace period was not very big. Um, so Google Podcast is no more. Um, I started using Podcast Podcast Addict, and they have their own review system on there, and I'm trying to encourage people to maybe leave reviews there. So I don't know. If you're so inclined, go do it. We really appreciate it. That's all I'm trying to say. Anyways, anyways, I am ready to talk about video games because I haven't done it in so long. Uh, do y'all want to talk about your experiences? Yourself. I know. Do y'all want to talk about your experiences with with uh, with content warning first from last week? I've been playing almost nothing but Dragon's Dogma two, so you know I don't. We've talked about that a lot. So let's let's start with with what what we did last week. Okay, uh, let, me, sure. let me let me. I don't even I don't, I don't even know what the fuck this is. <laughs> Nick, it's basically the story of our lives. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's quite the sales pitch. Not too far from the truth. Well, well, I'll do the bitch. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. What the fuck is this? I'm like, you all play Lethal Company, right? Yeah, yeah, we that's, that's a pretty is, great game. This too. is Lethal Company YouTuber Edition. Oh my god! What, what if Lethal Company, but you had uh, really all you had was a video camera, and the whole point is to get a cut a dope uh, demo tape, a dope video for YouTube, and that's like the whole goal. You're shooting film. I don't actually, you know what? I don't even know what you do in Lethal Company. Do you kill? I, I've never played Lethal Company. Do you kill things? All right. well, you right. Hold, on. Hold on. Yeah, so the whole point of Lethal Company is you're trying to collect scrap so you can turn it in so you can make enough scrap to move mm. on to the next day where you have to collect more scrap to move on. Same thing here, except for you are trying to create content that is good enough to when you upload it to SpookTube, you earn enough views to earn enough revenue uh, to meet your quota and then move on to the next day. Can we so be real for a same... second, guys? This game exists mm-hmm. because of us, right? Am I mm-hmm. right? Right? This, You're not this, wrong. This, this, this game, game exists, exists because of Lethal Company. Well, let's I mean, get, just... well, that's true. This, Brad, this, maybe this, more appropriately. This exists because of, uh, oh my God, it's a bear. Yeah. Holy and crap, it's a bear. 
don't mean to don't mean to toot our own horns here, but uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry. This is made it, by the same or team, it, is it? It exists because of the Blair Witch, right? I mean, yeah, literally. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, it's a footage, yeah. horrors is kind of what this is going for. Wait, so but so with, real, if you're playing like multiple funny. players, right? I'm I'm only mm-hmm. looking at the camera of like one. There's only one. Oh, camera. There's only one camera. Yeah. Everyone Wait, so kind of supports the person running the camera. So one person, fun. yeah, it's so one this person. Is, you're not watching gameplay mic. footage, really. You're you're watching the footage that was recorded by the person holding the camera during the mission. Which, yes. by the way, everybody watches on a couch after the mission to kind of like, you know, and, you know, see have what happens. Laugh. Yeah. yeah. So, so what happens is the the group of you go down in a uh, the diving bell into the underworld. Uh, where your entire goal is to capture footage of spooky stuff. Um, you don't have, a t- you kind of have a time limit in regards to your suits. I only have so much oxygen, uh, but the whole point is you have X amount of footage on your single camera that you have. Uh, so you want to try to capture as much good spooky footage as you can. Uh, and then if you are able to escape with that footage, uh, you can convert it into a, a cd a dvd whatever uh you throw it uh up on the tv and it gets uploaded to SpookTube, and it is basically a twitch stream uh the footage is playing people are chatting uh in chat um making comments like oh slacker chan has a great voice like oh i haven't seen the infamous nolan in so long uh and Thanks, you all sit yes you yeah. all sit on a couch and watch the footage. You've never actually seen it before. You don't exactly know what you recorded when you were down there. Uh, and then hopefully, if you've recorded enough spooky stuff, you get enough views, you earn enough money, you can move <laughs> on to the next day. You can then use that money to buy more things to make your life easier when you go down there again. So you can buy um, uh, weapons to, to try to fight against the spooky stuff. Uh, defensive items you can get uh, like a like a literally a boom mic uh you can get like a like a reporter microphone that you can literally stick out at, at enemies and stuff uh, uh you can get like sound effects stuff so you can buy all this stuff to kind of make you can buy emotes um, okay that you know is, what's up crispy's over here giggling is he are you giggling at the fact i'm watching someone i'm watching yeah. someone getting pulled into the like, I, i'm remembering the that because like while like someone was stuck in that monster on the ceiling yeah it was nolan and he was dying none of us knew what to do and i had a sound effect machine so i'm just like holding the sound effect machine up at him and just like making boo noises like boo boo <laughs> And it wasn't this until seconds like before did. I died that someone in chat was like, oh, if you hold G or Q or whatever, you can throw an item at them and it will knock them loose. So many of the things you can buy are not like useful for exploration. They're useful yeah. for making dumb YouTube content. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be wrong. For, for how shitty it, it ended up being, we had a fun time still. So. Wait, yeah. D- go deeper there. What do you mean? How shitty it ended up? Well, like we never really got past day two. Um, you know, uh, we, we, kept... We, we we kept constantly dying or uh, sounds like lethal company the footage. Oh no, for sure. Or yeah, like, uh, like you, you know, have not, a, not... you have to like hit a threshold of views per like Quota, every yeah. three days, and if you don't meet that, you basically fail out and you have to restart the loop. I yeah. mean, we we streamed. Lethal Company, how many times? Like three or four times? And every time we started the game from the very beginning, like we made zero progress. So what I will say, the nice thing about Content Warning versus Lethal Company are the days are shorter. Uh, Like that you can get through that three day loop in probably like half the time you would like a Lethal Company run. Gotcha. Um, So it's a little bit quicker to kind of figure out if you're going to pass or fail. Um, Yeah. I'm watching someone get attacked by a person, like a snail, like a yeah snail guy. Yeah. Snail and, and this, is, this is all I'm, supposed to be like Marvel Hornets, like YouTube horror kind of shit. But yeah. then they're just like attacking these like goofy noodle people. <laughs> well, no, like, I mean there's some pretty there's some pretty interesting uh, there's some pretty interesting enemies. There's that one guy you saw earlier. I love my face there. 
<laughs> um, so the, all the faces are literally just like text. You can have like three yeah. characters or maybe four that you can go and everyone can make their own unique face. Uh, but uh, uh, they're like, you know, yeah, there's that slug guy. There's one that like will turn invisible if you hit a light on him. It'll kind of like make him, make him dissipate. There's that one like fucking frog guy who mm-hmm. just kind of walks around. And as soon as he gets close to you, his mouth opens really wide and he just starts yelling at you. There's um, the guy, the there, mixer head that runs really yeah. fast. Like, yeah. like literally like, yeah. like, like, a, like a, a a mixer that you'd use for mixing like cake batter or something. It's literally just like spinning. It's like, and, like pyramid he head, but yeah. But with a mixer. mixer. Yeah, there's <laughs> a little frog guy, yeah. Um, this, but, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to like gauge what like, the, I mean, the character, the, they all look like Gumby characters, right? So it's kind of like, that's kind of funny, right? But it also has like this really kind of cool look to it. Like they really, ca- it really looks you, like they captured the kind of like the, the Blair Witch, like shaky what's cam really, YouTube content. What's really fun about that is that like the top world where you live and like, prep for all this shit is done in a completely different art style. Like, looks <laughs> like a, it looks like fucking, um, like super land or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I it's love very, this. It's very happy go lucky. And at the end of the day, to end the day, everyone goes and, and, and jumps in their bed to go to sleep together, mm-hmm. uh, to, to start the next day. Uh, and yeah, shout you, out, yeah, shout I, out to the moment when Chris Davis was silently teabagging me, except, he wasn't over my face. He was over my crotch region. <laughs> so we were just having silent, <laughs> peaceful missionary sex. I apparently. couldn't fit it in your mouth. It's just what happened. Oh my God. Well, you weren't even close to my mouth, buddy. Ooh. You were taking it up the bunghole. That's good. That's good. I had a good time. So, like I said, all of that being said, and I don't. we only played for like three and a half hours, maybe. We still had a really good time. But we have not gotten great. to the thing that Brad wanted to talk about. Oh, what's that? Uh, well, fucking remind me. <laughs> I don't know what was I going to talk oh, about? Oh, that when you cut these videos, it gives you the option to save them? No, 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 no. When oh. all of a sudden Brad was not talking to us. Oh, like, oh, oh, oh. so, well, so first of all, I got to say, like, it does the great thing with localized audio, right? You can yes. also flip the camera around and, like, talk to it. So, like, if you're not around or you get lost or whatever, you are kind of, you know, the idea is you're recording those Blair Witch moments. Like, I'm so scared. I can't find them, you know? You're shooting yourself selfie style, right? Mm-hmm. But at some point, it, it, the timing is crazy because I'm having like some slight tech issues. Um, and at this around that time, I just decided to bounce, but they never get the notification that I'm bouncing at the same time that Sonji joins. And they don't realize that it's Sonji. They still think it's me, but Sonji figures it out right away that they still think it's me. So he just decides to go like completely silent. And this, they go on a, an entire mission going, Hey Brad, Hey Brad. Like, well, cause, cause at the same time, I'm like, Oh, I'm having issues with my mic. When I realize what's happening, I realize I'm, I'm like watching the stream and they think it's me and it's Sonji being quiet. So I'm like, Oh, I'm having mic issues this whole time. They thought it was Brad. Okay, like, hey, Brad, Brad. And, and it wasn't until afterwards when they're watching the footage where anytime Sonji was like by himself, he flips around to, to selfie mode going, yeah, they, they don't realize I'm not Brad. They're so stupid or whatever. And like, you don't see that until you watch the footage after the mission. It was just really funny. It was a perfect so, so, so story. You don't of... see, you don't see like names over people. You just kind of see their faces. And I think I just either didn't notice that Brad's face had changed or maybe I thought he had changed it or whatever. The only time you actually see the names is if you go into like the like in game menu, yeah. which I don't really have a need to go into. And so I never went into it. And it, like I said, it will, literally was not until we were at all back at the house watching the vod watching yeah. the footage that we realized it was fucking so <laughs> he understood the assignment, he understood the assignment. that yeah, is, is that's beautiful well quick question does this have because this isn't made by the same team as lethal company right does it no. have like the cool audio effect that lethal company has where like it's yes it's localized yeah, well, yeah. it's localized, but there's well, not, like, the whole, like, if you're going, like, underwater and stuff like that. Yeah, the walkie talk. It's not quite like that. Um, I, it's one of those things where I'm sure they're probably going to add something a little bit. I mean, more. I'm just, like, the brilliance of Lethal Company for me so far has always been how real it sounds as people get farther away from you and their voice kind of trails off into the point where you can't hear them anymore, which leads to some really incredibly funny moments, like when people fall off cliffs or, like, yeah. or it's not quite walk through a door. Good. Yeah. Because, man, I feel like that combined with, like, all the, sh- the cool shit they're doing here, it would be fucking amazing. I really want to play this. <laughs> I'm actually kind of bummed that I missed this. 
Um, I mean, so we, we can play it again. And so the funny thing is, and somebody in chat might be able to correct me or maybe he knows more than me. I saw like a thread the other day where I guess there's another game company or like an you know, indie developer who in a vacuum without knowing about content warning is was is making a game that's almost exactly the same. Uh, oh. Like a found footage, like everyone together recording. That's stuff. gotta be an indie developer's worst nightmare. <laughs> no, it was, and so but actually, you know, they were talking about how, um, you know, obviously content warning beat them to the jump, but they've actually like talked with the the developers of content warning, and I think they're they're trying to like almost like not link up together, but kind of maybe share some content with each other or something to that effect. I don't really know too much about it. I only saw this one thing. Uh, but yes, to your point, Nick, it is a, con- a worst nightmare of you've been working on something for like two years or something and, and like literally weeks before you plan to launch it. Someone yeah. launches something that's almost I, the exact same. I could also see Lethal Company because this game didn't actually like blow up. It's not like huge, huge. This thing didn't no, really no, no, quite no, go not, viral, not unfortunately. Huge. I could see Lethal Company like adding basically this mode into the game. You know, yeah. that sort of like shit, which like still the thunder there too. you know, kind of like pull, a, pull a Fortnite or whatever, or, you know, like everybody these days is still in shit. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I was surprised that, that when I kind of looked at steam, I'm like, Oh, there's not many reviews here. This thing's not like, like, you know, in comparison to lethal company, it's like nothing basically. Yeah. Um, which is a little sad, but cause it is really fun, but you know, it's, and Lethal Company is still think, going I, strong. I would argue that Lethal Company came out in a, I don't want to say a further state, but there's, I guess, to an more to it. Uh, there's yeah. more you can do. There is more of a, uh, you know, there there literally is just more to do in the game uh, than in this game. This game, the 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 shtick, the loop is very simple. Um, yeah, it, it's, and, it uh, feels very one note right now. Is this a 1.0 you know, release or is it like early access or? That's a good question. It's um, early access, so, surely. Everything's yeah, I'm, early I'm, access. I'm pretty sure. Let me go look at the uh, the theme page for it. Um, but uh, but yeah, like it, it, you know, just as an example of something that you know, uh, you know, Lethal Company has that content warning doesn't uh, is like, oh, you know, you level up and stuff like that. Your character, uh, you know, uh, has like the level where you're like the intern, and then blah blah blah, and you kind of right. move up. Um, I'm trying, where do you see, you can see somewhere on the steam page, right? It's like, yeah, you scroll down or... farther. It should, well, if you scroll down, there should be like a big green, I think it's a green box or something a that'll say like why box. early access. Usually it's right no, below like the, yeah. the video or the trailer window or whatever at the top. I mean, I if guess you're not I seeing see it immediately, it. then it must be a one. Then I guess it's not. Yeah. I guess they're calling it 1.0. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it has, um, like I said, the uh, the whole the concept of, you know, you're kind of a, a progression to an extent, uh, you know, the store uh, in uh, Lethal Company feels like a little bit more. The items you can buy feel more useful than the yeah. items uh, in content warning. The items in content warning, like I said, are like, oh, a microphone. And if you buy that microphone, the person who's holding it, their audio is like four times louder uh, than uh, everyone. Well, it's else. not local. It's not local. Oh, correct. Yeah. So at any point in time, like if I'm holding that microphone and I run 50 yards away and Brad starts recording on the camera, you hear me talking um, on the cameras. And the, to be clear. Correct. Yeah. On the footage. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just Lethal Company just seems to have more to it. You know, it has like the outfits right. you can ch- change and stuff like that. This just kind of has you change your face a little. Um, the like you said, Nick, the whole like audio system is way more advanced than lethal company the concept of like the, how you hear people from farther away how you if you fall in water you start hearing them like garbly or so whatever good. it's or, so yeah, goddamn good you know company. there's a lot more of that um it, it definitely was either in development longer or at least just had more hours on it than content warning like i said right. not saying content warning is bad um but uh but yeah it certainly looks fun i want i, I want to get in no, on it this is next time. I, I'm I'm shame, I'm bummed that I missed this because this looks awesome. <clears throat> uh, all right, so uh, you know maybe 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 maybe. Hmm. Speaking of early access, Chris Davis. Hello. You have a game that you have a game that you wanted to talk about that is in fact in early access. Although I think it's supposed to come out of early access this year, maybe possibly. Yes, yeah, sometime this year. That's on their roadmap. Um, and they have been living up to their roadmap very, very transparently. So, um, 
I've actually already talked about this game before. Um, this I this I played it like a year and a half ago, I think. Yeah, that was the, a Steam it Next was a Fest demo. Game. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I have been playing lately because I've needed to save money because I had to pay the government the their blood money for to the IRS. Yep, that's how that um, works. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you get a new job and it, you get a, a pay increase. I've been playing Shadows of Doubt. Sounds like you're not you. Not, you don't have your withholdings correct. Then you should owe them like nothing mm-hmm. at the end of the year. Chris I, Davis. you know, it's one of those things that was never really explained to me, so I didn't never did it. Anyway. It took me a long time to get mine right. Anyway, sorry, that's neither here yeah. nor there. We're here to talk about video games, not real yes. life bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shadows of Doubt, if y'all don't remember, is a procedurally generated voxel based detective game. Um, you are inserted into a dystopian noir esque uh, city that's randomly generated with the entire population like, randomly generated. It's like New York City, right? It's like modeled after New York City, or, or uh, not or really. It it tries to evoke like the the atmosphere of that, but like in no, the noir aspect. Um, mm-hmm. But no, there's there's not really any connection there. And it's just a game where you play as a detective who's down on his luck who is taking any cases that come his way possible, um, turning it in uh, to get money and to raise your social credit to eventually retire, Um, just like in real life. So the the whole, yeah, that's the whole stick. Like every day there is a crime that happens, whether it's a murder or or something like that. Just one per day. I I mean, definitely not modeled after New York City. (laughs) That's... That that's the prime loop of the game is there's a major crime that happens every day that you have to sneak your way into investigating and then solve for the local government to get paid and raise your social credit. For the government or for the police? Uh for the oh, government. Maybe, maybe, the police, maybe that's kind of the same thing. I don't fucking know. The the police do not like you. Um oh. so you, you have to be careful around them. You're uh, circumventing the police to solve <laughs> to solve. Also crimes. just like real life. So the yeah, that's the that's the whole loop of the game. Every day there is a murder or a, a crime that happens. You rush to the scene of the crime. If you beat the police there, you have a few minutes to actually investigate the scene uh, without being interrupted. If you don't, you got to well, wait for the police to leave so you can kind of sneak in and do all your detective work. And from there, you you investigate the clues. You check for fingerprints. You look at uh the the background of what you know about that person you look at their connections to various other people in the world their job you in you interview things like people that. specifically right so uh in a limited right? capacity you are talking to a person on the screen as i'm looking at them yes this is one of the clients uh i picked up this this is a side case uh basically somebody broke into his apartment and stole a very expensive bottle of wine um and for a, a good amount of money and a really good character upgrade, um, he wants me to come in, find out who it is. The problem is that he is a very social guy. And so basically you go to his address. He, he claims that it has to be someone that he knows that did it. Well, you go to his address book and it's got like 30 names on it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, so this this one became a bit of a dud investigation. That, that's the thing about this gaming in early access is that it's missing some things that need to be fleshed out, um, and it needs some considerable refinement. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah. I feel like that is that part of the because no one you had, you had expressed earlier you you said you had some quote unquote doubts about this. Had, had you played the demo for this? Didn't you? Oh, you were making a fucking joke because the game. God damn it, Nolan. Sometimes well, I can't tell the difference between I, I, I can, from Nolan I can and real there. comments. I can't comment there. I, I think it's less of like a polish thing and more of like a, well, because everything is procedurally generated, it's going to be somewhat lacking in terms of, you know, I, I, I don't know if, if, you know, you see what I'm saying? Because I, mean, yeah, I feel like we live in an like, era now where like every like, procedural generation is like kind of an obsession in, in this, in the game development community, or at least in the indie scene, it, I, you're seeing it so much. Yeah. I mean, which it's cool. Like it's cool technology, but like it definitely has its limitations. And mm-hmm. I, I, I almost immediately kind of 
raise an eyebrow whenever I see procedural generation come up. And, you know, we've yeah. been down that road before. That's the whole No Man's Sky thing, obviously. Yeah. Like, look how far yeah. that's comes. So, like, you, you can get there. But, like, yeah, look how but, long it took No Man's Sky to kind of to kind of get to that point, right? Yeah, um, but, like, the, the whole... The whole idea of this game is incredibly ambitious, what they want to, try to accomplish here. Hmm. It's um, a lot of moving because, parts. Like, I don't even know how you would keep all that shit in line. Like, like I, keep all your ducks in a row. I, it's, it is a complicated piece because, like, it, it generates a map and all the characters and all the structures. Everything in the game is procedurally generated um, apart from, like, a few very specific NPCs. Um, and it scales it, to however it, you want. Um, is it so the actual get, structure of the city or just the people within it and the missions they give you? The, the everything, I think the it's structure everything. of the city, the structure of the buildings, the people in it, their background stories, their connections with one another, their jobs, their schedules, everything they do is randomly generated. Um, hmm. To and, and, and because of that, there are... Again, the limitations that are that I've noticed and they need to be polished and expanded on is that you're a detective, but you can only ask certain questions of a subject. Um, you could ask them things like, oh, have you heard anything unusual? Do you recognize this person? What's your name? Can I get your fingerprints? You know, for a, for an you investigation. Boys, <laughs> That'll eventually be a mod. Um, but like, <laughs> again, it's because it's a procedurally generated game. You can't ask them whatever you want. No. Yeah. But like it's it does have that foundational work to where I feel like they can get there to give you more options for investigating, for more interacting with characters uh, than there is right now. But what is here is a pretty fucking cool idea. Um, I really yeah. like the idea of getting a, a, a call on your police scanner that, oh, there's been a murder at 802 Grove Terrace, whatever. Um, and you race the cops uh, up the building to try to get into the apartment and now, investigate the body before they lock the scene pause down. Pause for a second. So, like, if, if, you, if you hear that come up on the police scanner and it's like it gives you a specific address, yes. does that just mark it on your map and then you can go to it? Or do you have to, like, kind of, is it, are you having to like kind of memorize how the city is laid out? So you have to like try and kind of just use your head to get where you're going or like it can how, be that how, way. How guided is it? It can be that way. What you can do is um, just open up your your uh, your file board, your your connections board. Um, it'll give you the address and you can go look it up and then you can generate a path to go to there. Like an, an arrow yeah. will pop up on screen, tell you where to go. Basically, mm -hmm. um, there is no fast travel in this game. Um, everything moves okay. at as fast as I'm you. I'm going to ask again. I'm going to ask again because I'm a little confused. Okay, you're you generate your city when you boot up the game yes. for the first time. But I can't even time tell you you're, that. You're, you're, every time you play, it's your it's the same city. So when you learn where right. Grove no, Street is or what, so every when does it change? Is my Wait, I thought I thought the city is generated when you start the game, and that is your city. Every like when you reload, you're Imagine still in that it, city. You know Minecraft. You know how they do seeds for their maps. It's basically that they generate that's a not, random seed, and then they populate answer. the world that's based the, on that seed. Okay, but do you know how Minecraft works? I if, mean, yeah. It's when I based. create my world in Minecraft, and that's the the world I want to play in, then it stays that world until I create a new world. My yeah, question for you is. Saying. When you're playing in your world of shadows of a doubt, you're always it. The world's always going to be the same when you're playing in that world, right? Correct. You have no reason to load up another world. That's like a com completely new game, right? Correct. Correct. I think we're all on the same page so, here. So, so, just, so it was... it's it's the mission design and the people and stuff that that's that's always being procedurally generated or randomly, you know. Well, the the pe the people the... are randomly generated once at the start of the seed generation process and then like okay. you're stuck with that list of several hundred people on the map okay so so eventually you are going to like learn where all the places are to where you, you yes. don't necessarily need to rely on, okay on arrows and shit yeah okay but you know I, here's a, here's the one thing i'll say about this because i do think this looks like this looks like a really cool idea but detective like specifically this whole like detective uh 
genre, if you will, in video games mm-hmm. is still one of those genres that I think we're kind of struggling to like. Like, I don't know if there's been like the that one like really amazing. Maybe yeah. I'm forgetting something here, right? Like, I I, yeah, I just her don't. Story, you fucker. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Maybe right, but like I mean, her story there's... is a very is a very cal- calculated. Plan. Return of the Obradin. Yeah, that one. Sure. Too. Okay, again, there's there's been I, plenty of detective right. games over the decades. No, no, no. There are plenty of detective games, but I think there's not very many Obradins. There's not very many her stories. And the, the 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 commonality between those two games that were just referenced, obviously, is that they were very designed. They were very calculated. Nothing was procedurally generated. Those Correct. are designed so that you have a very specific experience and even within the realm of games that that take that approach to their design in that genre there's not very many ones that like really stand out as like amazing games Oberdin and her story obviously definitely are one of those are 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 of are examples of that but like suddenly you you throw in procedural generation and you're dealing with like it just becomes yeah. like so this, so like, so so this is so it's like half a detective game, half like de- Deus Ex, right? So it you know you, where you're trying to get code, sneak through vents, you know you're trying to like get into places, but right. the actual detective work is kind of like, you know, you know maybe you're looking at like a computer prompt or whatever, but at the end of the day, it's kind of because I've watched a fair bit of this game as well, um, and it's kind of like guess who, right? Like 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 oh you you got to hmm. find out who the the person you're looking for is bald and you know has you know long or you know long, you know like his shoe size is a six or whatever and it's like right. you're looking through your files to find out uh th- what this person's shoe size is to see if he's the, your actual target or whatever to do whatever right so like mm-hmm. that part of the game it's it's cool but what's making but it's not like mm, like you, like detective magic is not part of I think what makes this game. Like, there's not too much deduction. I mean, happening yeah. here. It, yeah, that. Well, I, I mean, I guess that is deduction, but but it's it's very simplistic. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like that's based on the, uh, for in order for this kind of thing to even work, quote unquote. But like, you by making that concession to like make sure the procedural generation stuff works, you end up with kind of a. Uh, I don't know, kind of shallow maybe experience. I don't know. It, it's hard and hard for yeah. me to say because I haven't yeah. played it myself. Shallow mm-hmm. compared to like a, like a scripted, handmade story, of course. I mean, I, mean, I just I just think about like like you know, no one made the crack the, the the joke about La Noir, and then it made me immediately think about La Noir, and that was like a huge AAA production where they were trying to like nail the stuff in a very controlled environment, and I still don't. Yeah, but they that's lame, right? They missed the. But but well yeah it, it's lame as a detective game it's fine as a detective story but mm. like I think having so much like a certain amount of like it, it's the fact that like the pieces are always moving because they just generate a world and they are, they're on these like set schedules and stuff it's it, it's almost like Hitman esque what's exciting about Hitman is like the, the level is not going to be exactly the same every time because I mean, they kind of are, but it's the fact that the, there's all these pieces in play and they're always moving around. And that kind of makes it interesting because it, at any given moment, it's very, uh, you know, what's the buzzword that we always use? Very emergent, at least a very emergent moments. Right. right. Um, mm-hmm. Where, you know, anything could happen like, Oh, I got the wrong guy, you know? And, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Quick- I, like it, it, it's such a good proof proof of concept but i don't know if it's gonna like cross the finish line and and like become this thing that's truly remarkable i mean chris you've been playing a a while uh you've been playing a bit of it lately right like how much how much would you say you've played and how much how many of the detectives how how much has changed since the last time you talk about it because what you're talking about now is what you kind of mentioned last time you played it so i'm curious as what has changed what has improved um well they've they've added new case types uh, in fact, what okay. spurred me to play this was they added a new update in which uh, the the case is a a, a sharpshooter assassin. Um, mm-hmm. So you go to this person's house and he's been he's been clearly shot, and you can investigate the window and then calculate the bullet trajectory and then go to the sniper uh, spot. Batman Arkham shit. <laughs> yeah, investigate the area and then get your clues from there and proceed. Um, and I. There are flaws Have you there. Done that mission yet? Have you done that mission yet? Yeah, yeah. It's in yeah. fact, 
it's I think the game is prioritizing the pop of that of that mission. Um, mm. because like after I finished the initial tutorial and one case, it immediately popped up. So gotcha. I mean, it's 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 a cool idea. Um, yeah. I here's here's the here's the growing pain thing for this game is that the narrative really isn't there because mm. but the, and, and that it's, it's the nature of the beast, but here, here's the thing is that the tutorial for the game has a structured narrative um the the people's names the places uh and what happens uh are different but the events of that case in the timeline uh remain the same because of the tutorial so they introduce a narrative in which uh, you get a, a mysterious note under your door in the middle of the night <coughs> and you are, uh, go to this crime scene. You find a body. Um, the police are called. You have to investigate sweetly as you can and uh, escape. And then you go through the process of the tutorial detective experience. You fi eventually figure out who the next victim will be. You figure out who the killer is and you try to stop them. And again... Everything's on this simulated uh, time scale. So like when I was doing the, this tutorial mission for the second time, the I found the assailant. They uh, I got to their house just before seven o'clock in the morning. I was going to kind of break in and investigate. They woke up and they were immediately running over to the other victim, the, the second victim's house to kill them. Um, that's just, this is what they do. They wake up in the morning like, gotta go. <laughs> And they just I mean, that, over that's when they, that's when he was programmed to attack. Uh, but like the narrative links there of the, the character dialogue interacting with the victim and the suspect and things like that, like that's not there outside the tutorial. And that's yeah. probably the most important thing I need, think they need to add to the game at launch. They're they're leaning very like they want they want those emergent moments to kind of be the experience but at the same time yeah. i feel like when you have a detective game like the crux of a good detective i mean maybe this is maybe just my take on it but like a good a good detective anything whether it's a game or a movie i mean it's all kind of the, the crux of it is like is the the core is the central mystery intriguing or is the central motivation or is the ca the character that you're playing as uh an interesting character like as a detective like detectives are inherently i think very interesting characters and you know it seems like this is maybe leaning towards lacking a lot of that stuff because they want all of that to kind of come across in the uh the procedurally generated Chris emergent Davis, shit are you saying this game needs narrative legos <laughs> <laughs> i mean i specifically called out lego nar uh, narrative legos when i talked about this game last year but <sighs> Like, look, just, it just seems like it, this I'm is like a semi survival game. Like you're just supposed to like live in the world and like get money and buy new stuff and go on missions. This is this isn't trying to I mean, I don't think it's trying to tell a story. It's just trying to be like a cool little semi thing. My concern is like, does the, ma is is the magic going to wear good. off? Right. Because it, because there's only so many mission types and because like if this is a game this doesn't this doesn't seem like a kind of game that you're going to want to get good at because once you get quote unquote good at it you're probably just going to like be done, done with it right because you're going to start seeing the matrix code and saying like oh I know this mission type I'm going to do this and oh I need a code I know the different places to look because you know I've done it all before like I feel like this game is going to be most exciting your first like dozen hours with it and after that it's just going to be like well it, unless like the reward like structure or, or whatever like there has to be a another carrot there really getting you to do it over and over and over again for it to be like a forever game because it is never going to be like as dynamic i mean as i don't know it's like you're never i feel like you're never going to see anything mind-blowing like like one once after that dozen hours right you're gonna have it's just gonna it's, it, it just feels like a fun sandbox to play in and you know it's you, it's going to be an interesting, interesting trajectory no. let's 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 shelve it and come back to it when the game actually comes out like like we said it's such a cool right, idea but it, it's like the finish line is very different than the launch of early access which is like super exciting i i just like i don't know you're saying they need to get there with narrative i'm saying like 
they, <laughs> they, they need, they to, need find to work a way on this game for like 10 years and then put it out and say you know like it needs to be like uh like no man's uh, guy <laughs> a little bit no right in sky but but kind of like a like a net hack sort of thing or like a you know like those those old rogue games that they literally work on for decades so there's like an infinite amount of like permutations for like everything ever you know uh like a like a the fucking uh jor jor fortress right and, and you know it, it, until they're doing that literally working on a game for decades it's just gonna get old like like after that honeymoon period ends and, and I guess that's fine, but it's sort of an awkward place to be in with something that's so similar. I think it's, I think it's going to get some attention right out of the gate. If for no other reason than kind of the way it looks like it's kind of, it's, it, it looks like a cool, like cozy experience with like a really nice. And the steak, the steak. Seem bar- I mean, the but state, like, like, like Hitman, Hitman finally introduced like a roguelike mode that I hear is like pretty like challenging and the stakes are high and it adds like the sense of t- tension that you don't really have when you're just replaying. Also, they have sort of like the one shot like missions to you get one chance to do this kind of I'm thing. Because nobody here has tried that here. Yet. This just seems so playful, right? Like it's it's it, but it, yeah, I feel like you need the stakes. Otherwise, what's the fucking point? It's Only just, time I mean, will tell. Yeah, I mean, Only there 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 are tell. no stakes right now because it's it's just, it's See, just if, not. If there. you had said that two years ago, I'd be like, well, they still got they still got a few years to. Look. But we're talking about this game coming out of early access right now. I feel like those stakes should be there. But then again, you know, I don't know what it, I don't know. This could be like a, like as everybody's approach to early access is different. This could be like a vertical slice, and they're just keeping a lot of stuff just completely inaccessible. I have no idea. I feel but, like. The reason that like procedural generation, sorry, I know we're trying to move on to the topic. Procedural, gen- but it's interesting to me. The procedural generation is so like interconnected with like the roguelike genre is because I feel like that sort of randomness, what's going to happen element is only exciting when you have just the one life, right? Yeah. I mean, the stakes are built in, in like they're, they're in love with each other, right? They, they're True. because without, without that, I don't know. I don't know. It's. I mean, this, this I'm saying. I feel like this needs to be a fucking roguelike. Otherwise, this doesn't work. I don't. Know. Eh, I, I don't know. I, I think. I think they I can get the there. Story is this I don't know. Okay. I. I. Here's I think the argument here is that like this, like having a an interesting story with an interesting character amidst all these procedurally generated things would be a way to kind of like tie it all together in a in a way that feels interesting. Yeah without that component at least to me i'm kind of on chris davis's side of this like without that aspect i just don't know how much staying power this is going to have because like you said you're eventually and probably not after a particular after a super long time i think you're going to start seeing the matrix code and you're just going to start knowing how things work and you're it's just going to it's going to go from being fun and exploratory yeah. to feeling like monotonous and repetitive i mean i'll tell you right now that i've put over 20 hours into it and i'm not i'm not seeing the matrix code i have an idea of how to go about solving some cases but there were others that i had no fucking idea how to proceed well that's good i didn't know you would play that much of it so like hearing that is pretty good like i i had a case yesterday that popped up guy got poisoned like I don't even know how to address fucking poisoning. Like he had no connections when I went to his job and looked through his email. Um, he didn't have any in anybody who seemed like a suspect in his address book. No, no, nothing like that. And there's no resource I can go to, to figure out where they got the damn poison. Like <coughs> there's probably a way in there. I haven't figured it out. And so how did you solve it? I didn't solve it. I pause the game and then I haven't come back to that case yet. But once you solve the poison case, you now know how to solve the poison case. I mm. know how to solve a poison case. Like doesn't mean that a they're poison. not going to end up being different every time. Okay. Like no two, yeah, no I mean, two murders are but... truly alike. You realize that? No. And I, also I, there's I mean, a ton. Like I said, there are a ton of, side quests and cases you can go on like um like at the end of my footage earlier uh i picked up a a a wanted ad next to a payphone and it said go to this store 
Um, I have a I have a job for you that I'll pay for you, but you have to be the phone there will ring at five eighteen. Um, get there as soon as possible, and, and I'll give you the case. And I didn't make it in time because I didn't know what fucking time it was because I didn't look at my character's watch. <coughs> like it's there's a lot of variety in the side content that I have not experienced, and I think the variety's there. I just haven't gotten there. Well, you'll have a chance to get there when we eventually talk about this game when it comes yes. when it comes out of early access because again it is that is happening this year. Yeah. Um, and and again they've been very diligent about their updates and being very transparent about everything that's going on in the game. It's it's hmm. kind of impressed me how how uh, how not opaque they are. So. Ew. All right. Before we take our break. What um, about my game? You just forgot the name of it. I saw no, you trying I, to think Inkbound, of the name bitch. earlier, I know and you were like, ah, what are we going to talk about? It's called Inkbound, bitch. I know. Yeah, we'll talk about it. I know what it's called. Inkbound, bitch. Do you want to talk about it? I mean, we have. We, we need to take a break soon. I, okay, here's take a question. Break. Does anybody here want to talk you just, a little bit? He just start the footage. Does anybody <laughs> here want to talk a little bit about Dragon's Dogma 2? Or is that just me? To I'm not about it. I just want to, I just want to, so I've been playing, I just want to squeeze this in real quick because that's kind of all I've been playing. Um, when I, when Roll I can find that time. Old footage. Roll that super old footage that I recorded weeks and weeks ago. Um, before we recorded, remember we were talking about the Seekers tokens mm -hmm. and how there's a, there's a mission that requires you to remember exactly where your yeah, first secret don't token was. That. Don't spoil that. No, 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 no. I'm not. Well, I'm not spoiling it, but like I, I stumbled. I, this actually happened while I was streaming last night. I stumbled across that quest, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh shit, this is what they were talking about. And I didn't realize that when you start that, not only do you have to f remember where your first seeker token was, it gives you seven days to find it, or you fail that quest seven entirely. Days. So suddenly, Once I you locked... start the quest. Yes. Once you start it, okay. it gives you seven days to find that first token or you're fucked. And oh. I found it. <laughs> nice. But that are there I, guides I'm, on like helping people try to find out where well, maybe here, they here's got what their I, first I, I will admit. I will admit this is what, so I knew there was one secret token I can remember very, very clearly. It wasn't the first one I found, but it at least narrowed it down to it was like I, I know I found a secret token while I was journeying between Melv and and uh, Ver Ver Vermund. Is that what it's called? The main town, the big town. Mm -hmm. um, so like I knew I found one along. So I was like, OK, so I found my first secret token somewhere at the beginning of the game. And I knew it was from before that spot where I knew exactly where it was. So I looked up a guide that tells you where all the fucking tokens are. And then somebody even drilled down further. says, hey, if you're trying to do this quest, there's a good chance it's one of these like 20. Hmm. Is it's like yeah. it, it, chances are at the beginning of the game you found one and it's probably yeah. one of these and I went through that and I it was like the eighth or ninth that I tried and I found oh. it. Uh, wow. So I highly do recommend you remember where yours was. Uh, now I do because <laughs> because I found the thing that I was looking for. Not really a spoiler to say where it was. Right? Oh oh um it was right outside. There's a harpy nest that's outside of the first kind of like outpost that you stop at. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, it was actually two harpy nests on this little side road, and I found it in one of those. Um, okay. So I highly recommend seeking that guide out, so especially I, if you I didn't, in a situation I, I like that. I didn't know, and, and yeah, that sounds helpful. I, I didn't know about the whole remember where your first token is thing. I, I We talked about it on the podcast, and we talked about it before I had even found my first seeker token. Oh, um, and so when I did, I was like, ah, remember this location. And it's easy because it's like in the in. How do you say it? Ver Vermund? Vermund? Ver Vermund? 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 I think is maybe Vermund. Just say fast. Vermund. Uh, it's uh, in the fountain in that town. Oh. <laughs> so well, there you go. very easy to remember. You know, I didn't expect to run into that quest very early. I didn't even realize that quest was in the first region of the game. I thought it, I thought it was like a late game kind of thing. Um. So I'm sitting here wondering, like, what happens if you don't if you find that quest before you ever find a seeker token? Like, are you just are you just fucked because there's not a seeker token? Like, you don't have the record. I don't know how that works, but uh, just be careful because that 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 
it was I accidentally triggered that. Um, but you're good to go, Nolan. If you know, <laughs> you know exactly where it is. Um, look, I just want to say I am I'm now like coming up on like 40 hours in this game. I still have not left the first region of this game. Um, and it's that's weird. Is is it though? I feel like you're the first person that I've told that said that. <laughs> I've had people tell me they're like, "Oh, don't worry about it, Nick. I didn't leave for like 50 hours." Um, hmm. I didn't think that was going to be my experience. Um, especially considering I'm very eager to see kind of like these, the second region, like the, which I presume is like the more desert, deserty mm-hmm. mm-hmm. region, mm-hmm. right? But like, I and and a lot of times I set out to do like main quest stuff, and I just and then like it's been three hours, and I'm like I haven't done anything. I'm just I'm I'm running around. I'm getting distracted by things. I'm doing side quests. I found a fucking dragon that I took down for the first time the other day. I'm having I'm having fun experimenting with like pawns uh, with different vocations and stuff. I'm I've I've like maxed out three different vocations. I'm loving being an archer now, uh, which I didn't really expect. But it's just it's so it's so cool, man. I, I feel like I'm your finally having that for your fighter is not very good. It's very low level here, Nick. Fuck you, Brad. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, it's hey, this I feel like I'm finally kind of having that genuine dragon's dogma experience that everybody talked and loved about that first game because i feel like when i finally did go back and play that it was kind of you know it was kind of rushed it feels a lot smaller in in retrospect this this just feels so much more grand and i feel like i'm really digging into the systems a lot more and i'm having a lot of those like really emergent (laughs) moments man i have a pawn that is like three levels lower than i am but she's Hmm. a sorcerer yeah i think sorcerer and she has that meteor spell have you mm-hmm. used, have you used that or have you used a pawn that uses that? She's if she gets yep. if she can stand still long enough to summon those meteors, it kills almost everything. It's it almost Dude. feels like cheating. I was fighting a dragon with like six health bars or like you know the six full health bars, whatever, and she mm-hmm. used that meteor spell, and I had already been fighting this thing for like twenty minutes at this point, and it probably had like half its health left, and it took off like two and a half full health meters and i was like this is wow. insane this does not feel super, this does not feel balanced but yeah whatever it was cool balance balance is weird like it's always like hardest at the start and then eventually all that stuff that's like scary with all those health bars just starts melting to everything yeah. it's weird but, but the battles feel hmm. like appropriately epic like they feel kind of like monster hunter-esque man i fought that i fought really? that dragon i fought you know, I've I I I've, I've taken down like fighting a griffin at night is just, whoo, it's crazy. I I I watched a griffin like I shot a griffin out of the sky with an exploding arrow and it landed on top of a traveling ox cart and killed everybody. <laughs> like it's, mm. Mm. you're a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this game's pretty cool, man. This game. You know how cool. like when you're pawns come back Mm -hmm. there's a there's an information they don't say it verbally but there's like an information page that like has a little thing that's like i traveled with an arisen who was particularly notorious he he drew mistrustful looks wherever he went like i always wonder Mm. what these people are doing that makes that happen what like does it not make you wonder what it says about you yeah what does that mean like what are they doing that like Am I the untrustworthy one? (laughs) Bunch of fucking deviants out there. (laughs) You know, uh, oh, I had, you see, when this game first came out, there was like a clip that was going around, like a viral clip going around. It was like, people were like, this is the moment where I realized this is the best game I've ever played in my life. And it was like Mm -hmm. a dude fighting a cyclops in the middle of like the woods. And there was like a, there was like a, a gap. There was like a big cliff. And he like, tripped up the 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 cyclops while he was like next to the cliff and he like turned and fell and then like landed with his like arms stretched out so he was like he became a yeah. bridge and they mm. jumped over him and then like they ran over him and then attacked his hands and he made him just let go and he fell to his death and they're like that was the coolest thing i've ever done because i didn't have a way across the bridge that finally happened to me and all of my pawns we we jumped over him. We ran over to the other side. And I was like, yeah, we made it. I had the moment. The thing happened. That was really cool. And I turn around, and all three of my pawns are standing on his back. 
Mm-hmm. And they're like stabbing him and like attacking him. And I was like, stop. And I'm hitting the bu- I'm hitting the down button like to me, to me. Uh-uh. He's we're good. Come on. And they wouldn't listen. <laughs> None of them would listen. And they all they attacked the dragon's him. plague. They I thought yeah, it might be the dragon's it. plague thing, but I don't think so. I think the AI is just a little fucky. And then they uh, attacked it until he fell and they all he died. fell and he, they all fell <laughs> on his back into the chasm <laughs> and landed in a deep river and they all died. And suddenly I was like, I had to go into discord and I was like, guys, what the fuck? All my people, I thought they were going to spawn de- next to me or something, but no, I was like, they're all gone. I have to go find yeah. a rift stone somewhere and bring them back. Um, yeah. But still, it was pretty cool. <laughs> it's, even when this game fucking breaks, it's cool. It is cool. It is pretty cool. Uh, and Brad, you're still over here binging Ronin, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm actually playing Inkbound, which is... Uh... Which we're going to talk about after this quick break from our sponsors. So, or a message from our sponsors or something. Anyways, uh, <laughs> no, we don't have sponsors, you bitch. Uh, anyways, guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about Inkbound and... Uh, video games and stuff and do fancy critics so if you're watching us live on twitch or youtube don't go anywhere we'll be right back All right, welcome back to the show. Brad, tell us about fucking Inkbound. I don't know Ink what this game Bound. is. I've been playing, it came out in 1.0. I've been playing Inkbound. Uh, hey, Nolan, you like Monster Train, right? Yeah, it's great. Well, this game's not nothing like Monster Train. Maybe but I should mention that Nolan had to bounce. <laughs> I'm it sorry. is from the developers of Monster Train. This is their next game. It's called Inkbound. It came out in early access last year but you know i'm usually waiting for 1.0 and 1.0 hit and i'm like well i like monster train a lot actually you do you really do i'm gonna give this one a shot now i was a little like "Mm," at first because this is a roguelike game like monster train and it is and the battles are like tactical turn-based you know tactical strategic right which is usually my shit i'm like i'm into this right but like the big thing about this game is like you can play it online with friends right it's a cooperative turn-based tactical roguelike and i'm like well, okay well i'm definitely not going to play this with other people but after doing enough research and you know enough people saying like oh it's actually a really good single player i actually prefer a single player i played most of the single player you know i'm like okay well i'll give it a shot because i like monster trance so much you know, there's a lot of really cool ideas there. You know, maybe some of that's going to translate. And honestly, just the fact that it's like a turn-based tactics, uh, you know, kind of roguelike game is just sort of my jam. I you know I, I like it's a genre I click with. So I'm like, uh, this seems like it's it's for me. So uh, the first things first is it's is it's very like, um, and I'm, I'm glad it's very like snappy and responsive, which which is. It, and a lot of that is probably because it is, it was pitched as, or, you know, it is like an online game that you can play with other people. You don't really want like a slow sluggish experience. So I think, you know, a, a, the result is that it, 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 they ended up just making like a really snappy responsive game where it's like really easy to kind of, you know, get around the world. Like you move very, very fast. And when you're in battle, like everything is, is very like quick and, and, you know, and you know, you could do these turns like super quick, um, because everything is just very smooth, quick, and responsive, which is good, right? And you know, you wouldn't it would need to be, right? If you're playing this game with others, you don't want everyone, you know, taking forever to like, you know, waiting forever for you to take your turn. But now I say that, but then again, Baldur's Gate 3 is one of the biggest games of last year, so what do I know? Um But this game isn't slow and clunky like that could be if you're playing with other people. It's very fast and quick. Uh honestly. <sighs> God, you know, I've been thinking a lot about like Transistor as I played this, but Transistor was a game where it was kind of like this when you got into battle, but, but instead of, but you kind of queued up all your turns actions at once. And then they just sort of like played out in this game, you're kind of working with like resources and cooldowns and stuff. So there's like so much you can do in like any given turn, but since it's just you in a single player game and you're fighting like a group of enemies and they're all going to take their turns after you have your turn, you know, you're trying to like, 
you know, deal as much damage and, and like sort of like game the system to kind of like, you know, reset your cooldowns and stuff to tr really do as much damage and like mitigate the damage incoming to you um, before, uh, before your turn ends. Because, you know, a lot, like you see in a lot of games like this, a lot of turn-based tactics games, you know, it's, it's very puzzle-like, right? You see everything that the enemy is going to do, like how much damage they're going to do, what ranges uh, they're going to do it in. And a lot of the stuff like, can react to that like as you're doing it right like this enemy i'm fighting i think right now has a thing where you know it's gonna do like a big area of an effect like in front of him right but if if i attack him you know he's gonna turn towards me so uh and, and gonna point that attack at me after i do that attack so i need to make sure i have enough movement to get out of the way after i do that attack or have some like teleport style ability that's queued up and not like stuck on a cooldown or whatever and and because it's a roguelike it's all about sort of like making that build of of you know, like leveling up your character, getting the right uh, skills, getting the right relics, which by the way, are not called skills and relics. They're called bindings and vestiges and, and. Ooh, nerd uh, shit. Uh, uh, well, it's not nerd. Look, I'll say this, this game. Uh, if So, so their last game was monster train, which I think is really great. It's very much a game influenced by like slay the spire, but it had, it's cool. Like unique, like hook of of you see like the monsters like kind of like moving up like through the train or whatever it, it like it had its cool hook but it was more or less like the spire in terms of like its combat design um in a lot of ways even sort of like its event design it was very like informed by slay the spire this seems like a game that's very informed by hades like sort of post hades blow up the monster train guys were like okay well we, we can make kind of a game like this it's not going to be like a real-time action game but the thing about this game is like the presentation is like really good. Not only is everything voice acted, but it's like really good voice acting, which is surprising for this style of game. And I think it's because of something like Hades raised the bar and the monster after, you know, monster train was a huge success. So like, oh, well, we're going to spend some fucking money and we're going to hire some damn good actors. And like all the, you know, and like that stuff's surprisingly good. Like, like the presentation is really nice for that stuff, but, but, but it's hard. It's one of those games where like everything, like there's like way too many proper nouns, but like the proper nouns are also like, they're using like generic terms as their proper nouns for like every, everything. So it's like, everything Example? is like, well, like, you know, like a, your skill is a, is a binding and a vestige and it, 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 your relics are vested. Like they're just taking words that mean other things to be the, the proper nouns in this world. But like everybody, talks word like swapping. all the people, all the people are called like, oh, you know, the scribe and the and inkbound, you know, like the scribe and the, and the I, don't, I don't know how to say it, but like, it's so hard. You can't even get through a sentence without one of their, their, um, their fucking God. It, it's the terminology. It's like turning me off. I just wish someone would talk to me in like a normal sentence without mentioning the bullshit of you know the i'm I'm the needless like that they called me i'm called the needless and and mm. the, the the my my it's, my um my my, 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 own... my job class is called an aspect and I, and everyone is is talking like that and i'm like just shut up i can barely follow this because i have to like retranslate all these words into the proper nouns that as they exist in this universe and it's i'm just kind of like exhausted with the dialogue even it's not they're, bad they're smothering like said, you with their own terminology yeah it, and it does this thing and i'm playing on a steam deck for the most part but i have played on some on pc it does this thing where like all of these special words that are not special words but they're special in this universe are like highlighted red to let you know that like hey this is an important proper noun um but like it doesn't do the thing that like pyre does where you can hover over it mm. and it tells you what this is and i feel like it really should um so that would like, be helpful I mean, I'm, I'm sort of in a weird place with it where like it's well presented and it's not like poorly written and it's certainly like like well performed it's just i'm finding myself not caring like just kind of getting tired of the dialogue which is you know it's not the that slam definitely dunk. wasn't the case with, definitely wasn't the fucking case with hades right and and I kind of like fuck up this battle like really bad. And, and I was going to get <laughs> back, back to the, like the main hub um, um, to kind of like talk to some of these people and stuff. And, and it's just, I don't know. It, it's weird. It, it, it's like they, 
they step they raise the bar because of Hades, but at the same <clears> time, <throat> like I don't know, like they're not quite super giant when it comes to like making compelling characters or like a com you know, like a, even the writing. It, it's just it's not it's not there. It it's, it's, it's I feel it feels like Monster Train never worried about this stuff really because that game was like pretty much just the gameplay. And for the most part, this game is a gameplay gameplay as game, but but like I, I feel because they're trying so hard with some of the story and characters, I, I feel bad for not paying attention. Um as much as maybe I should be. And maybe I'm just I don't know, maybe it's just where I'm at. Maybe maybe it's not even maybe someone else would play that game and like be really into these characters or whatever. But um I don't know. It's it's but it's cool. It's cool. Like the the gameplay like like Monster Train, it does have like this this yeah, have any of y'all here played Monster Train Crispy? Surely you're good people. You've played some Monster Train. Not I think it's just well. you, my man. <laughs> where where like it, it seems like it. builds can builds can oh, get like really crazy. I supported it financially. Uh, okay. I didn't play. Um it's very build, Nick builds can say. get built yeah. Builds can get pretty, pretty crazy where it's like, uh, I feel like I'm breaking this game. But then as you get further in the game, you realize, oh, well, no, I I have to break this game. And if I don't break this game, I am not going to succeed. <clears throat> well, like the, the the hit point values of enemies, they get like really up there. And there are runs where I'm like, man, I'm just not getting the, the fucking vestiges I need uh, uh, to in this run, right? Like I, I feel like in a run of Hades, you're you might not get like op but like you're never going to be offered something that is just like not really doing much um you're all, you're always going to get powerful in this game I, I definitely feel like um i like if, if if you're not really getting into that scaling sort of damage like like damage over time is really like powerful in this game and that scales really well like if, if you're not like scaling in a certain way you're just gonna really kind of hit a brick wall which I, I guess is the case with a lot of roguelikes but like more so in like I don't know. It was definitely the case in Monster Train, and it, it is definitely the case here, where where you got to get crazy fast, or you're not going to succeed. And I kind of like that it, it, because it, it, with a rogue like it means you really have to kind of learn the game, um, and, and and as your sort of knowledge base grows, of you know you start looking for certain things, right? It's sort of like, oh, I have this thing. I really need to find this thing because then this shit will really pop off. And and I like when a rogue like you kind of hit that point with a rogue like where you just sort of know what you want and you know how to game the system to kind of get it there. You know, it's more about oh, I'm not just instead of clicking on random things and let me focus on like building a little bit of wealth here or economy here so I can I can keep re-rolling until I get the thing I really really need to succeed. And and you know this game's good at that. Um, it's it's very like and like the different classes are really cool uh it's not as crazy as like the different decks in like monster train which some of those uh are very very different um from it from one another here you know it's all a little more like say you know like the different weapons in hades if you will but they can play quite different but it's you know you're still kind of playing that same game and monster train it's like man this deck is like insane this is nothing like those other decks i've been playing um here it's more just you know, like there's a there's a weaver or whatever that that's sort of like a mage type character, but you attach threads onto the different enemies and and you're linked up through threads, magical threads to all the different enemies, and you could do cool stuff with that. And and uh, I don't know what class am I even playing here? Um, I think I died finally. Um, there's a class that like manipulates like this orb, and so many of its abilities are like buffing this orb and like moving this orb around the battlefield more so than like your own position. And and it, it's just it's cool stuff. It, 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 and it's it's well made, and it's like fast and snappy. And, and I think that kind of leads to it being addictive, even if it's not quite hooking me as much as like a monster train or some of like the best roguelites I've played. Um, you're constantly unlocking shit constantly i mean because i think it's probably because it's an online game where you know like there's there's like a special currency to like get like cosmetics and stuff and it's a little grindy to get that shit maybe i don't know maybe there's like a store where you can like but just straight up buy that stuff i don't know i'm just playing an offline mode um like like here's here's like this little nice presentational touch i don't know if you're watching the footage but like there's this character who's like a like a blacksmith right and then there's also like a um like Painter? this juggler juggler type character and and they they're voiced by the same person 
and like you ring a bell to talk to like the jug like this the jester type character and then like the blacksmith walks into this tiny little room and he like rolls out on the other side and like oh i guess it's the same guy even though he says it's his brother but like and then if you want the blacksmith you ring his bell and then the juggler like you know you know somersaults into that little room and then you know the little blacksmith guy just kind of like like saunters out and I'm like all right i see what you're doing here this is very clever you're the same dude i think i don't know but the other characters don't really call him the same person it's but it's like it's a funny little like presentation thing like it's it's nice and i, I don't want to be mean to it but then he opens his mouth and i'm like i don't really care like what is this guy even talking about bindings and ink, ink inklings and ink bounds you just and, don't and, get it brad you just don't you just don't get the, the it's not lore. like you it's not get... complex it, it, it's like it's like they, they just went too hard on their own lore which i think happens when you know when you're creating you know, something when you're creating something sometimes you tend to get like, like, like they didn't have to go so hard. i kind of just wish this was just in the monster train universe because they created like a, a world and like you know they you know it's like a that's like a deck builder right where there's all these different like you know it's, it's like the different um like colors and like magic the gathering right the different right and, and like there's like really cool like themes to each of those decks and i'm like they're you know there was like one deck that was like these undead like candle people you know like literally like a wax like army that was constantly like melting and and that plays into like how you play that deck and it's like oh this is fucking cool like this wax people candle people deck and i'm like man why why is inkbound or you know why is there you know turn-based tactical roguelike not just in that universe which was already like pretty damn cool um so, I can't help yeah, but feel like I, that's like as a developer, you don't maybe they yeah. don't want to be pigeonholed as like the monster train people. They don't want to be like, well, all their games take place in a shared sure. universe kind of thing. Sure. Unfortunately, I don't think this game is is blowing up like Monster Train. It reminds me a little bit of like um I mean he's doing all right, I guess. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I, when a game is in early access for a long time mm-hmm. and I don't really pay attention because I'm waiting for 1.0 and then it comes out in 1.0. I don't really know if like all of those reviews actually came probably when it launched in early access where the excitement was at its peak because right now it's hit 1.0 and I don't think there's anybody talking about this game, which is a bad sign. Maybe. I I, I don't know. You're the only Um, one, Brad. Well, certainly on this podcast, but um, even other podcasts I listen to, I'm like, I don't really hear anybody talking about it, but Monster Train was huge. People still talk about Monster Train. Reminds me a little bit of like when the Rogue Legacy people made full metal furies which has a oh, yeah. kick-ass fucking soundtrack but like no one played that i mean game. i think it just goes and then to they're show like, like uh we're gonna make rogue legacy 2 i think instead uh of like branching out there you know um, I, I, like I, super I, giant right you yeah, know they I, chipped pyre and it's like that didn't I, do so hot i think it really just goes to show that that the ma- the masses right the general public like the the, the casual gamers if you will like a lot of them they just don't they they don't make the association right they don't they don't look at studios they they reckon they recognize game titles and don't always associate game titles with a particular studio so like the team that made monster train i don't think means the same thing to a lot of people as it may mean to like you or or any one of us or what it also has that weird weird effect that like um I think Hades had this when, you know, cause a lot of us waited till 1.0 to play Hades, not everybody, yep. but I, I, I notice in like games like this where that are in early access for like a while or quite a while, um, that have a lot of like systems like a roguelike, um, they do various updates throughout early access. Like this is the blah, blah, blah update. And this is the blah, blah, blah update where we're introducing this system or this new type of resource or this new type of mechanic. But when you wait till 1.0 and you get all of that at once, it can be a lot. I was like very intimidated at first. Like, what is all this shit that's throwing me out of me? But if you played it since the launch of early access, you know, they probably eased that stuff out there and it made all, you know, it made sense as you kind of played it here and there, but the sort of waiting on that 1.0 experience can be a lot sometimes. Um, But I definitely got over that hump eventually. And, you know, it's, I don't know. I'm more hooked on it than I am impressed with it. I think ultimately in terms of like a forever roguelike, I don't know if this isn't one that, that I don't think I'm going to like play this forever, right? Like a slay the spire or whatever, but 
it is one that like I'm finding surprisingly easy to like pick up and like, Oh, I'm going to play some more of this. It's like, it's addictive and it's, it's, it's nice. I like it. Um, you know, I like it. It's good. Uh, I will say last thing is it does do the thing. And I don't know if it's cause I'm playing on a steam deck, but I, I very vividly had the same problem with another game recently. It was when I play, was playing cobalt core. Um, if y'all remember that FTL, the game was kind of like FTL, oh, but yeah. it was like a deck builder where you're like moving the ship left and right. And mm. like, you know, which was a really cool game, but the same thing in that game where kind of like a single bad press can like tank a run like a single bad, like, Oh, I clicked here instead of there, or I wasn't really paying attention to this UI element or whatever can like completely tank a run. Right. Like if you're in a tough fight or, you know, a tough boss fight and like I click, you know, I, I hit this button by accident, you know, you know, it's a hard game. It's a roguelike. Roguelikes are supposed to be hard. Right. Um, I, I've definitely done that in, cobalt core and here as well like where it's like oh and i think i even did that when i was recording the footage like i really shouldn't have made that move or i, I shouldn't have pressed that button like i i and i've done this multiple times i actually picked up the, my orb my resource or whatever this thing that spawns on the battlefield before i was i wanted to and man i don't think there's coming back from this like this for at this point like the, the fight's gonna snowball from here like uh, constantly at, you know like into the breach right or something where you can see everything the enemy's gonna do to you and then your turn starts and you have to try to figure out that turn like pretty much almost every turn in this game once you get into like a hard fight or a boss fight or a mid boss fight like at the start of the turn you're dead and it's like how do you unravel this to not be dead you know what I'm saying? And because of that, that's why a single bad press or like, you know, you don't move, you're not standing in the right place leads to like instant death. And I, it's a little intense. And I don't know if it's because I'm playing on a Steam Deck and these games aren't necessarily designed for controllers, even though they have controller layouts where it's really easy to hit a button. And maybe that's that's a little harder than like dragging a mouse and clicking on like a, 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 a part of the screen, right? Um you know, just the symptom of, of creating these like shortcut buttons to do all these different things leads to one button press means one miss press means a means a game over. But uh, I've had those moments, but, you know, I don't get too frustrated because, again, it's pretty fun. It's pretty snappy. Pretty cool. It's not remarkable. It's not. It's, it's not the slam dunk powers. success that monster that, or the. Yeah, I, and I, get it. I get it. You know, that game definitely had something right. Uh, this doesn't quite have that uh, that uh, it factor necessarily, but it's it's a pretty damn fun time regardless. So I don't know, Inkbound. It's fun. I don't I I, I don't even know how to recommend it. it. Seems like y'all aren't interested anyway. I mean, like not just y'all obviously, but anyone's really too interested. So I don't I don't think I'm gonna pitch it to anyone because I don't know, there's a lot out there, but it's a busy year. Like it. It's 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 yeah. a weird it's a weird thing, right? To, I to appreciate you respecting my time. It's fun, but not <laughs> remarkable. Like like I'm I'm having well, I mean you you bungholes have not even played Monster Train, so like I guess just play that. Um, oh, did that come out this year? <laughs> like shut <laughs> the fuck up, Chris. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. I like hey, you don't need to worry about us. This podcast is for the, for the people at home. Well, Ink bound. Uh, it's kind of like Rise of the Ronin, which is a, a you know we talked talked about last time or whatever. A game I'm like super addicted to, and I think is like extremely fun, but I don't think is like not deserving of the scores that it got. But like it's such a crazy year that it's like I don't know. I mean, maybe buy a Final Fantasy or Yakuza. I mean, or fucking Dragon's Dogma or whatever. But you know, Rise of the Ronin is on a on just sale. Out of, like out of curiosity, pick it up. it's a fun ass game. Just out of curiosity. You haven't been playing any Dragon's Dogma 2? You've been focused on... No, Nick, you more... like For whatever reason, you're obsessed with the idea that I'm not currently... I mean, you, know, you have been talking like, about Dragon's Dogma 2 for like years. And it is you? here. Yes, dude. I mean, you've, you have been you've been slobbering the knob of Dragon's Dogma for the past... For almost the entirety of this podcast's lifespan. And okay. And this this game that that you've been excited, but like, but like, but like so, same, same with same with and you, Yakuza and same with with uh, Final Fantasy, Yaku, right? What are you talking about? Yakuza has like eighteen games over the past four years. Dragon's no, Dogma right. Two 
has been has been was one. It's one of those games that you've said it yourself. You're like, I can't even believe this is a game that exists. Like this doesn't feel like but we like, were ever going to get like it. Rebirth, right? But like, but you're you're not. You haven't been. You haven't. You been think that I'm, since I'm not currently playing Dragon's Dogma, I'm not going to play Dragon's Dogma. But I don't work like that. I I went from playing prince of persia i'm not to criticizing Yakuza, I'm just to curious. final fantasy to dragon's dogma to rise of the ronin look, to inkbound look. to all of these games because we're on a podcast i'm not like, like if dude, i played dude. dragon's dogma uh, uh all week i would have talked about look, this shit with you with the same weak ass footage that you <laughs> that we watched listen, again for the third podcast in a listen, row listen bitch and i'm just trying to play something new listen bitch what do you how do you, what do you think i that you are you are literally me with Baldur's Gate three. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm it, gonna be great no, li- that is literally the same fucking thing. I'm just I'm just trying I'm just trying. I was like, like that are, too with Baldur's Gate, but you know, towards the end of the year, I made sure to find time to. Well, I'm sorry, I, I didn't find I, I, I didn't I, find time I, to finish I, it before the end of the year. Well, I mean, it's April sixteenth, buddy. No shit, dude. No shit, and I just I just went a whole week without basically without playing anything. So like I'm no 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 I got you. I'm, I'm just a, saying like 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 these games are I not. I haven't touched I haven't touched Rebirth in over a month. You want you want to know the truth, Nick? I don't. I I bought Dragon's Dogma two. I'm renting. You know Final Fantasy. I'm renting Rise of the Ronin. You know <laughs> like those are games I got out from GameFly. So like Dragon's Dogma Two is not going anywhere. It's I'm not. I, I know it's not going anywhere. I know it's not going anywhere. And I, also, I do forget sometimes that in a lot of cases, you're having to prioritize between games that you've bought and paid for versus games that you rent and have for a temporary yeah. amount of time. That's that's. I get it. It's just one of those things where it's like I'm trying to understand because there are certain games that like I know when they come it's out, a fair question. it will drop, I will drop everything that I'm playing to play that game. And I thought yeah. Dragon's Dog 2 was that game for you. And yeah, but, it, but, but see, so, so like I played probably like, uh, it was like 25 hours of Dragon's Dog. Uh, and like, those were like feverish. That was a feverish 25 hours, right? Like it's a game that I have like the utmost confidence in that I will have zero problem picking up. And when I do, I'm going to like, already be shitting in the sock right like i'm gonna have no problem like picking that up again and binging it again right rise of the ronin on the other hand i'd be a little worried if i if i put this down am i gonna come back to you this you know the iron i'm feeling that, that i'm feeling a little bit that with rebirth to be honest dragon's dogma zero concern that is 100 my hole and i'm gonna get to it but you know i'm sorry shit, i got 100 kids they're, what? they're currently sick it's again. it's his hole that also, he fills I also forgot um, about you have kids. I mean, so. I'm just saying I, I, I'm, I only got so much game time and, I, and sometimes I like to prioritize something new when it actually interests me. It, and Inkbound was one of those games. And you know, this I'm year has saying, been like a whole year of games like that's that. That's how I crazy. usually operate. I just, I just sometimes, I just, so I'd but like you, you to show you me that. I like you to pay me the same courtesy. No, 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 fair. But you brought up Baldur's Gate. Remember, I went through most of the year. I put that down for a very long time. It was That's what Baldur's I'm in the midst Gate of. Fucking three. Not only am I a huge Baldur's Gate fan, you know, I'm a huge Larian fan. Like that game, that was my game. <laughs> and now it's like one of my favorite games. But like, I had no problem putting that down for a long time and knowing I was going to come back. I mean, um, I'm in the it. same boat. Like, like, I've got to go back. <laughs> Like, you, you stop. You... you cannot use Baldur's Gate 3 as an example until you finish the motherfucker, Nick. But you act like I don't finish games a lot. That's not what I said. I said that one you have not finished. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's and a big I'm game. It's a, a it's a it's a lot of game. It's a lot of uh, game. And uh, and you know, I realized recently. I mean, that's why you I'm playing I, Stellar Blade over Baldur's Gate three. Uh, dude, right now I'm focused on Dragon's Dogma two and Rebirth. I want to get those out of the way, and I also want to play. I, I right now I want to finish. I'm I'm thinking about Pacific Drive half the time, but I'm not playing that. I d- I decided, I I decided like there's really no way I'm going to finish any of these games unless I just laser focus on one at a time. Sure, uh, that's why you do I do know I, I really really love Monster Train, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this one's a big deal for me too. I know. Just wait, I know. Wait for one point all right. you know, I love tactics games, right? Oh, yeah. Zlade wants to know how many points I get 
on my not racist card if I finish Dragon's Dogma 2? Uh, two, I think. Two. two or cool. One. Two. What, cool. What's cool. Your, Gotta get those yeah. points. I'm, I'm still playing Unicorn Overlord. Four. That's the thing. That's one I don't have to put down because it's on my Switch. I take my Switch to work, you know? Like, like the all of these games that I'm kind of, like, waiting on or I'm pushing to the side are all, like, PS5 games, basically, you know? Uh, it really just, sucks. There's not... All the games that are out right now that I could be playing on my Steam Deck, like none of them are Steam Deck, like none of them run. None of the They're new games that are out right them. now are not. Very, but, I, but like not even like even some that are. I mean, like I could be, I could, be, I take my Steam Deck to work, but none of the current games that I'm playing that I wish I could be making progress in while I'm at work on my lunch break and stuff are games that run well on a Steam Deck. Oh, well, it, I mean, work is for indies, man. Where work is where you play Bellatro or Unicorn Overlord. No, I'm not even going to say that. You know? don't, don't play your fancy I'm re- games I'm re- work. An old, I am replaying an old game on my Steam Deck right now because all the current stuff just doesn't run uh, very well. What game is that? I don't even want to tell you. I don't even want to tell oh, you. Oh, it's Bioshock, you yeah, Lego, I'm playing Bioshock. Na- narrative Lego, Ken Levine, knob slobbing motherfucker. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Did you really have Bioshock. people over this week? Because your your Steam activity was very active, Nick, with a bunch of weird games. My Steam activity? Yeah. No, that was my PlayStation activity. And yes, I had I had two kids. I had, we had nine people in my house over the past week, and two of them are young kids, and one of them was playing. So he got you. You probably saw Mafia on on there, and uh, uh fucking oh, Assassin's Nick. Creed Black oh, Flag and. Nick. Oh, what? imagine if those kids lived at your house and they were there every day of your oh, life. Oh, God. I, you we know what I've so been playing happy. that I'm not talking we about so on the happy. podcast? Goat what? Simulator 1 and 3. Uh, There's no Goat Simulator 2. I could talk about Goat Simulator 3 if you like, because I've been playing a lot of that with Henry. But is there really but not I, a Goat really? Simulator 2? No, yeah, that no, that was the joke. That is a joke. Uh, uh, Goat yeah. Simulator 3 is all right. <laughs> you know, you get the little firework rockets and the guys go flying up into the air and they burst into fireworks nick i play shit but you know i didn't you are you are putting words in my mouth i didn't say you don't play shit. sorry i put down dragon's dogma 2 for goat simulator 3 but that's just how life is sometimes well i put down... somebody clip that out of context that is a great statement okay real, real quick Brad, about... before hmm. before we move on I, i'm curious uh, I finished Unicorn Overlord. How far along are you? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, measure those hours. Dicks. Measure them. I mean, like, like, rules, dude. like I don't. I definitely don't care about his tiny Unicorn Overlord penis. I'm gonna like this. Will be a 150 hour game for me, Chris Davis. You don't okay. need to worry about me. All right. I'm just I, I am, leaf. How many I hours like, did you? How, how many hours did it take you, Chris Davis? I don't remember. Um, you probably around ass. fifty, maybe sixty. Okay, yeah, that's I am, I am forty. I'm forty <laughs> plus f- forty forty five hours, I think, and I am basically at the Coliseum for the first time. Oh, in oh yeah, you're not which finishing is, that which, this year. Which okay, oh, don't say don't stupid. don't say don't say things like that. Yeah, no, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> and in Drakenhall, which I went to first, by the way. I mean, it kind of makes the, you go there first, yeah. Well, it doesn't make you. Uh, and, yeah, I am kind of 100%ing things, but I'm playing it my way. So, yeah, you don't need to worry about me. I, I don't care about the way you play games. Okay, no, that's fine. I'm not I'm not criticizing. I was just yeah, okay, genuinely like, curious because you're the we, only other we, person on this side who's going to play that game. We have, we are playing hot potato right now, and we are going back and forth between. He does. Like, the, uh, he does. He does. This motherfucker does this shit. He binges this shit, and then he acts like he's the fucking prince of these fucking games. Listen, you motherfucker. I'm glad you played an ogre battle game and Thirteen Sentinels. I know you love. I played that too. Finished that too, homie. Um, I'm sorry it wasn't that, but like you still played a brag game, and this is still a brag game at the end of the day, whether you finish it in a weekend or not. Um, that has nothing to do. I'm just saying. I'm. Just, I, we we butt heads all the time, Brad. I'm just saying. Like I'm enjoying that we're playing a game we both like. Yeah. Like you playing a Brad game, and I'm glad for you. You finished it. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yes. It's quite fun. Can I can I say what I think was the coolest thing about? You played the game it on baby before? mode too, though. You played it on baby mode. Oh, you're uh, actually yeah. trying to talk about the game. I'm sorry. I mean, I just I didn't want to mention. There's so there's multiple endings to the game. 
it like it i think this may have been a design choice inspired by breath of the wild in that you could theoretically go to the final battle as yeah. soon as you start the game yeah sure but it's a tactics game i mean you're not you're just gonna be like be a, yeah I, you not even have a chance although 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 actually there is some people who figured out a trick um there is a you, there is a certain class that can summon like an AI controlled unit, and mm-hmm. early on in the game, I don't know if they patched it, but like that summoned AI controlled unit was based on the level of like the map you were in, the enemy you were in. So if you went into an extremely high level battle and like used that uh, power, you would summon like an extremely high level AI controlled unit. <laughs> so you could kind of game the system and get through really fucked battles. Um, yeah. But I think they kind of fixed that in patching. I don't know. That was pretty cool. I'm just saying. Anyway. Um, okay. T- tell me about this game. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna, all right, all right, all right. Did you have more you wanted to say about Unicorn or are we? Or are we? Uh, no. Does this does the story continue to suck? Because the story kind of sucks. It gets better once once they start explaining more about Baltro and uh, other characters. Baltro. That's that poker game. I played that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, not a lot. It's, it's time for Fantasy Critic, right? We have we have officially reached Fantasy Critic time. Uh, not a lot has transpired. That big, did you talk about uh, your pickup last time? That's what I'm about to do. This is our first show in two weeks. Um, Ooh, Brad, you did you did you did officially drop Earthblade because it was delayed. So I feel like I don't oh, think yeah, we God, mentioned that. that. Was like ages ago. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's been it's been a couple weeks. Uh, that was and an easy think, ninety plus. Yeah, you dropped Earth. You dropped Earthblade, and we talked about you picked up Braid Anniversary Edition. Um, I, oh, yeah. I, nice I swooped in and picked up Assassin's Creed, codename Red. Doesn't even have a title yet, but I got it for a dollar. Uh, it's on my list. Uh, you and s- you spit on your copy of Rise of the Ronin. I s- <laughs> by bidding on this shit. You're, you're like I only like games set in feudal Japan made by westerners only I mean, like, on <laughs> assassin's creed red for me yeah i guess i guess it kind of looks that way huh um but here's the thing uh, a couple things happened a couple things newsworthy i think happened in the past two weeks uh one of which uh and this is all ubisoft related but ubisoft did a they, re- they gave a release date for star wars outlaws they released a story trailer for that it's coming out august 30th um and they also announced that they're going to be doing kind of their usual June showcase thing, right? Where they're going to show a slate of games that we all, and among those games, we know we're going to get a look at Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Codename Red, which is the feudal Japan entry in the series, um, is most certainly going to be kind of the, uh, the flagship game on that presentation. Uh, and that is, that has been slated for fiscal year 2025, which basically means anytime between now and March 30th or whatever of 2025. Um, but there but was, you, you, you understand what I was saying. You, you're yeah, making it sound like I, I, did, I didn't understand what it means, but, but when a publisher says, Hey, this game's coming out before March, the end of March, 2025, when they're all, when 2025 is already on their lips, like but that doesn't matter saying the year out loud. Make, to me makes it sound like there ain't a fiscal no way year actually... is a year long window I is the know. problem i know it's... but when you say that you when you say not 2024 when you say the words when there's a he... five on your lips but listen i feel like listen, that means that the, it's probably the gonna fisc- be february the fiscal year 2025 thing is literally only being th- that terminology is only being thrown around in like those uh, earnings calls and shit. And that's the is stuff that where, that's, getting, where that that's just that's what's getting reported. Like they're not coming out here saying, look for Assassin's Creed Red coming out in fiscal year 2025. No, no that is not part of the marketing. That is but just they would also say they would probably also say coming out by the end of the year. But they haven't said anything about it because they have the game has not been officially like unveiled, which is what's happening in June. Mm. I made this bid for Assassin's Creed Red. Um, I, I don't really even remember what kind of inspired me to do this at this point, but I realized I had a pretty good feeling that this was coming out this year. This and I a feel smart like, bid. And this I decided if I do it now, I can probably get it for really cheap instead of getting into a yeah. bidding war over it. 
Um, well, and then like the next day they did the, they dropped the, the star Wars outlaws thing and said it's August 30th. And I, the big question was, are they going to do star Wars outlaws and assassin's creed red in the same year? And now knowing that outlaws is end of August certainly makes it sound like they're going to, they're aiming for October, November, which is their usual window for assassin's creed. You and say that, right? But in this industry, when you announce a game for August, that means it's going to be November. But if they don't, if they don't, then I paid I bid for bid it for a dollar, and they will say coming out twenty twenty five. If if that is the case, there will most certainly be a date. So I yeah. it, worst case scenario, I lost a dollar. Um, Free drop. Yeah, but in fact, I probably should have thrown two dollars at it, but I was really not. Because you know, like, there's, 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 there's no world anybody for it. <laughs> there, there's um, there's no world where that game scores like poorly. See, here's um, the thing. Assassin's it's, it's Creed, even when it plus, no matter what, even when it's the Assassin's Creed, Although I feel Mirage like it's, Assassin's Creed is one of those series where it's like they have like so many kind of like smaller spinoffs and then they have like the core entries and like the core, like the spinoff ones are almost always like mid 70s. And that's kind of like worst case scenario, typically speaking. And like the yeah. primary ones tend to be yeah. in the mid eight, mid 80s range. So yeah. like. I have a pretty. I, I feel pretty good about this. I feel pretty good. We'll see what happens. Uh, and you know, I'm excited that Star Wars Outlaws, which is one of the games I drafted, has a release date, and it's a lot sooner than I was expecting. So I'm really. Uh, it's gonna be a. It's gonna be a big year for Ubisoft <sighs> for me. I, I, Chris Davis, no, there's no. there's rumors I, they're I, gonna I, talk about Splinter Cell in, in June as well. Don't don't give me don't do that to me. I'm sorry. You know, I used to like. I used to like, and I feel like a lot of us did. Well, where like we've been wanting Ubisoft to make this Assassin's Creed game forever, right? Like ten years ago, we were asking for the feudal Japan Assassin's Creed, a little Creed, late, right? Yeah, but like ten years ago, or however long ago, fifteen, you know, it's more like what were we expecting? There, were, there or, was or what kind of game is this going to be? There was literally a create. I forgot, like a one of the higher up creatives at at Ubisoft working on Assassin's Creed. This was back when like Black Flag came out or something, and they were talking about like all the potential places Assassin's Creed could go. And I don't even know if this guy is still working on the series or whatever, but I remember him specifically saying, "We're never gonna do Feudal Japan because it's too obvious. It's just it's not. We're not interested in it's doing it." Well, no, that's it's bullshit. That, it, it's it's a little weird because it's a you know, Ghost of Tsushima pulled it off, and from what I understand, from what I understand, mm-hmm. I don't really know is that it's like a popular game in Japan. Like a lot of people are, you know, it's scored really well over there. The people seem happy about it. It is a game about Japan featuring Japanese people not made in Japan. And I think what makes it a little weird is Japanese is a, or Japan is a place where they do make video games, right? And so it's a little weird to have the Westerners come and to make such a Japanese setting game i have right? a feeling so i have a feeling you're going to be hearing a I, lot about them going like working closely with people course, in japan do you yeah. think it's going to be like a game starring a japanese person oh, yeah or is it going to be like you know like oh 100 or last samurai or no 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 no, like no, no, a... no i am i am like i'm i'm like 99 percent sure it's going to be a a japanese character Ghost of Tsushima. See, we, it, there were some concerns before Los Ghost of Tsushima came out, but it came out and it's like, okay, this is good. You know, it's respectful. People are happy. They pulled it off. The localization over there, I, from what I understand, was really good as well. But right. like, um, I trust Ubisoft less, <laughs> less just in general, versus most publishers. So I was like, mm, I hope they do this well. I hope they do. Yeah, fuck I, this I don't. Up. But it's I also don't... a series that started in the the Middle East. So who the fuck knows? I don't yeah. Know. It's a series. I mean, it's a series that hit, like I feel like if they had, they've done this enough at this point, and I feel like they've, I mean, they've made the, plenty of like missteps with the series, right? But I don't think those missteps have usually ever been mishandling of that kind of stuff. No, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm forgetting mo- some stuff. It's more just like what we've learned about Ubisoft and their like company culture and their like shitty people, and it's like, yeah, I kind of don't want just don't just stop. I do think I do think and and this this is heavily rumored, so it's not confirmed yet, but I'm pretty sure I I feel pretty confident we'll get we'll figure we'll find this out. I think this is going to be kind of like Odyssey, where there's two main characters, a male and a female. 
Yeah, sure. So I think I think this is going to be the game that takes a lot of inspiration from Odyssey, but just obviously set in feudal Japan, uh, which I think is great because I think Odyssey, despite the fact the only problem I had with Odyssey was that it was too fucking big. So no, it's just gonna I, be I one think of those one of the leaks right? suggested like, that it was. Yeah, there was a male and female character, male, this female character. This is the last are this is the last in the chain of like rpgs so this is going to be very but, much but like isn't this like also post like assassin's creed you know games as a service or whatever kind of no, 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 no. this world. is this is the first no. game that is part of their um what are they infinite in, their assassin's creed infinite or infinity or whatever it's called yeah. which is basically Incredible. like yeah you're going to be logging into this service platform. to like yeah it's a plat like they're it's probably just platform. they're probably I'd be willing to bet they are probably turning this into a literal like virtual animus situation where it's like kind of like instead of logging into Steam, you log into this thing and then you have like an actual like space that you can walk around into and then you plug into the animus like you're going into the Matrix and then you go and from there you go into mm. one, one of these games, That's which is whatever. I mean, it's I mean. I don't you know, it's it is what it is. It's whatever, um, whatever it is. I'm sure it's going to feel gross. <laughs> I mean, probably it's probably going to feel gross, but I'm as long as the core experience, as long as the games themselves are not like drowning in games as a service shit, which they'll find a way. That's a whole that's a whole other conversation. We'll find out in June. The point is, we have a a job of the hut season pass coming. So, okay, uh, first of all, I, I, I that came up in discord this week and a lot of people were upset about the whole job of the hut thing um locked behind a season pass there was some clarification that came out today this is for star wars outlaws job of the hut is not a your interactions with job of the hut are not behind a paywall there is one mission that they are holding back for season pass owners but job of the hut and his whole organization and your is still a major part of like that game All in that right, story company man over here you, i'm just saying, saying I mean, that because you got on your fantasy you know, I, th- I mean i ain't well sure and it's also i mean i'm not gonna lie star wars outlaws is my most anticipated game of the year even though i know it also could be incredibly disappointing i don't know i'm super fucking excited for that game but i mean that it, that is a lot of people were kind of assuming that job of the hut is just like, if you want to interact with job of the hut then you have to pay for the season pass and that's not what's happening even though at yeah, the end of the day it is gross it is gross after. yeah i mean look mm-hmm. what they did to dragon's dogma you know single player Localized games don't need the... season passes just fucking flat out but whatever anyways um let's do it let's wrap up the show unless unless you'll have anything else i don't think there was much else nah. um fancy critic wise well we didn't talk let's about do the it. Fallout show uh, uh I'm gonna talk, you I'm... Know what? let's watch more and talk about it next week I'll talk about it in my four-player minute. Thanks for reminding me. I'll just. I heard I'll just Walton right Goggins was pretty good. Walton Goggins is good in everything. I'll watch that man do. Is he good in everything? I bet I could find something he wasn't good at. He was kind of weird in American Ultra, but he mm-hmm. wasn't. What was wrong with that movie? I mean, I don't. I, like, I would. I hear I mean, a lot of I'm things about saying, American Ultra. I'm not saying the man has has never been in a bad movie or a bad TV show. I'm saying when he is in stuff. He is probably usually the highlight, but he is at the very least never the thing that drags it down. Yeah. Was, no, was he's he the, great. I think he's great. I love Walton Goggins, and he's fantastic. Is he the highlight so. of the Hateful Eight? He was in the Hateful Eight, man. Yeah, he, he was, was in the Hateful Eight. Yeah. He was in the, and he was, he was good. Like, he was it great. was a good. I really like that movie. I've seen it a lot of times. I mean, I, he wasn't stealing scenes from Michael Chiklis, let's be honest. I mean, I like The Shield. We all like The Shield, but he wasn't stealing scenes from Michael Chiklis. Ain't nobody still scenes from Michael Chiklis. I've never watched The Shield. I should probably watch that. It's okay. Uh, okay. No, okay. Brad, why don't you start us off? <laughs> Four-player minute. Uh, start us off. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, yes. This is what I want to mention, just because this is kind of a wild ride. You know, I, I've been in that Rise of the Ronin thread over on Era every now and then, just kind of trying to get people to talk about like the combat system and shit, but ain't no one talking about that stuff. Um, you know what I noticed? I I saw people doing Team Ninja rankings, right? Oh, of yes. like, well, in terms of their action games, this is the order I would put them in now after having played Rise of the Ronin, which on most of these lists, Rise of the Ronin is quite high, you know. And this is this is like from back all the way back to like Ninja Gaiden on Xbox vanilla, right? Um, and you know, usually 
on the top towards the top of those lists you see stuff like neo 2 you see stuff like ninja gaiden black but what i saw consistently on on pretty much all of these lists that that were posted in this thread of these diehard team ninja action fans was ninja gaiden 3 razor's edge which was the re-release of ninja gaiden 3 everyone agrees ninja gaiden 3 vanilla is shit and from what i understand ninja gaiden 3 razor's edge still not a great video game as a video game but the consensus and trust me i asked about this is that the combat in that game in razor's edge specifically is peak it is incredible is what they're saying like literally one of the best action games ever made in terms of pure combat ninja gaiden 3 razor's edge which is a game i played like a demo of ninja gaiden 3 when that first dropped and i said fuck this trash team ninja sucks now I love Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden Black. I played Ninja Gaiden 2, obviously, when that came out. I streamed that. We were streaming when Ninja Gaiden 2 came out for the Xbox 360. Um, and you know what? That game was a kind of a disappointment to me, honestly. So when Ninja Gaiden 3, the demo dropped, I'm like, and it, it, that was a bad demo. Ninja Gaiden 3 Vanilla was trash. Everyone agrees. I'm like, fuck this game. So when, when I heard Razor's Edge you know, was coming out, which still didn't review great, but you know, it was critics reviewing a video game, not critics reviewing a combat system. Obviously I, I, I never even considered playing that fucking game, but now I'm seeing all these diehard action game fans, people, you know, have played all these team Ninja games telling me that like, no, this is like the best combat. Like it is so good. I've been watching like combat videos of this game and I'm like, holy shit. I forgot how fast, not only how fast Ninja Gaiden is, we are living in a, post dark souls world right we forgot what real action games were like damn it you know um that shit is crazy and it's fast and it's crazy and it looks brutal and i'm like man i need to play this shit this looks good and i looked up the i was kind of asking around like what's the best version of it and there is that ninja gaiden masters collection which has like the sigma versions of ninja gaiden one and two and then this razor's edge but it's like four and it's like 40 bucks everywhere. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to buy that. But you know what? Master Collection is on Game Pass. It is on Game Pass. Game Pass. I think I'm going to play some Razor's Edge. Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge, which was I thought was always kind of a shit stain on Ninja Gaiden, you know, along with Other M, you know, kind of that, that era, right? Metroid Other M, Ninja Gaiden 3. I'm like, ah, eh, Team Ninja, they lost it. Itagaki left. He wasn't that great in the first place, maybe. But no, apparently it's up there. Like peak action game combat so i'm gonna revisit this game that i've ignored all these years because apparently people fucking love it it's crazy i seriously i would look up a video just like Nin razor's edge ninja gun three razor's edge combat type that shit into youtube you'll be fucking surprised how like insane it is just fast and ruthless it's crazy looking so yeah that's it all righty uh okay. let's throw it over to crispy mm. well you were talking about how uh, he's talking to a very short person at his door. What is he doing? Hmm. Oh, it's a kitty cat. Kitty cat, what is it? Kitty cat. Anyway, so, sorry. This cat's like scratching at the door. I open it. She walks away. Ah, the door, I got the you. Door You're a fucking idiot. Fucking. <laughs> hey, anyway, cat continue. fucking got you gotcha. uh so you were talking about being disappointed that brad wasn't playing dragon's dogma and i gotta confess that i haven't <gasps> been playing dragon's dogma either you i bitch. haven't been playing Baldur's gate i've only been playing a little bit of uh like a dragon seven um mm. but i'm making progress in that game i finally kind of like blown open the conspiracy and it's uh the the game store like i'm reaching that point where like plot points from like 20 30 40 hours ago are coming back and i'm like oh i guess this kind of oh, makes shit. sense <laughs> like it's wild um really cool really weird um but the reason why i haven't been is because since last time we spoke uh destiny has been going mm. through a bit of a like here we are moment like they we're like, we're like eight years into destiny 2 and crispy has still never brought a minute of footage yeah. Love this game because I didn't know I didn't. I don't even know what Destiny in... Two looks like. Yeah, what is it? What does it look like? I remember uh, when it first came out. There was like jumping around on weird stuff. I'm like, what is this shit? I think in one podcast we had footage. 
Well, like everybody, so like I I started playing it again, and the sentiment in the community, like the YouTube creators, the people on Twitter, the people in the Bungie forums, the people on Reddit, right? Everyone's just kind of down. Nobody, nobody's like really excited about the future of Destiny. Everyone's really bummed out about Bungie, about what's been happening with them, just everything in general, right? Um. And all of those fears and concerns are still very much in play. But there have been a couple things. There have been a series of live streams, which were really fun and kind of different. Like, Bungie hasn't been forward-facing communicating like that often lately. Um, And they came back and did, like, four weeks' worth of live streams, which uh, was really cool. They added Into the Light, which was a free update that they added to fill the space between... Uh, when their original launch of the last expansion was going to be versus what it got pushed back to. And the stuff that they've added in this, like, free expansion that they just kind of, like, came out with uh, is really cool. And there's a lot of really interesting, like, long-time wish list item stuff. Uh, For instance, it revolves around, like, a full-on horde mode now, like a new activity that's, like, a horde mode with, with, like defenses and traps and tower defense stuff like like you're playing call of duty zombies or some shit like that and it's fun it's really cool uh they also did their gameplay reveal of the last expansion called the final shape um and people were real like i don't know what to expect everyone was really cautious and guarded and then they revealed new subclass new enemy faction new social space, new play space, like, all kinds of shit, and everyone's, like, actually really hyped again. Like, the community's like, what the fuck's happening? This is weird that it's so good. Why is this fun and cool and exciting? Why is everyone hyped for Final Shape now? Like, it looks so really So the Final cool. Shape is, like, the final... No. That's supposed to be the end? Or... No, they've also... <laughs> no. They so they, they've that. they've been talking about what they're doing after the last expansion. They're going to do these, like, episodes, right? Mm. And then before the gameplay reveal, Joe Blackburn, the game director, had a little one-on-one video, um, which he hasn't really spoken publicly in any of these things for a while, but... He was saying, like, you know, we've got other things to announce about the future of the franchise soon. And right around that same time, a couple of, uh, like, YouTube Destiny people were, like, hearing from, hearing rumors from sources. Or, like, some guy who posted a bunch of stuff that ended up showing up in the reveal trailer that, like, nobody thought was going to exist. Like, the Prismatic subclass, which is a new subclass that lets you just use powers and abilities from all the other subclasses together at the same time. You have light and darkness going at the same time, and you enter this new, like, ascended state. Um, This guy called that out on Reddit, and nobody believed him, and then everyone's like, oh, God, what? And then that guy was also talking about the development of Destiny 3. So there's a lot of rumors going around right now that, like, after the Final Shape launches, they're going to announce Destiny 3. And then I mean, it's I, feel, be... I feel like that's... I mean, I guess that's just kind of the trajectory of a game of this... of this scope, I suppose. It's been going for... I don't even... When did Destiny 2 come out? Like, 2016 or something? It's 2017. been... 2017. Yeah. yeah, it's been a long time, so, I mean... Yeah. No, no, it is was... Is it 20... time? <laughs> the f- oh, yeah. Destiny 2 came out in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But also, like, Bungie has been in trouble for a while now. Um, yeah. I Don't let me put words in your in your mouth, Crispy, but it, from what I understand, like, the Destiny community has not been happy with the game for a while. Um, Whoa. Things have been a, on the up. Wait, wait, wait. Things have been... Let's yes. be clear here. What would you like to chill the conversation with? No, no, no. <laughs> Destiny conversation... I mean... <laughs> We've talked a lot about it over the years, and it has big, like, sonic cycle energy, where it's, like, ups and downs. People seem excited, but then every now and then, I kind of look in that direction, and it just seems like people are sad. And I'm like, what happened? Everyone was excited, I thought. It's like, but, right? That's been, like, yeah, the I don't know. I don't game. know what Sonic, I don't know, I don't know what the good points of Sonic are. I don't know if people get excited about things that then aren't that exciting. But there were, like, 
peaks in destiny history there was like the witch queen was the last good expansion and then there was that then there was uh um Oh, the one where they killed Kate Six. What is it called? Anyway, um, there have been like these big peaks, and a lot of things have changed since then. And people are kind of unhappy with monetization. They're unhappy with this and that. And I mean, people are still unhappy about a lot of stuff, but not. I don't know. It's weird. It feels weird. Like, it, like the energy this week is way different than it was when I picked the game back up like four or five weeks ago. It, like the whole community is just kind of, and this is after people, um, this is after people were like basically ready to just like write off the game. And now like they're coming back with announcements that nobody was expecting. And people are kind of like, well, I don't know, maybe this will be hype. Like maybe this will be kind of cool. And I don't know if it's going to amount to anything. We'll see, right? Like, yeah. we'll see what happens in June. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you that right now, people are enjoying Into the Light. Like, the, the new content that they're putting out right now, people are into it. People are hyped about it. It's driving, it's driving traffic. Like, I, I follow just... a couple of uh, Destiny servers, and, like, they're kind of blowing up again, you know? Yeah. I just think that, like, from an outsider perspective, from a guy who does not play Destiny, hearing the news about the woes with Sony and how bad the reception of the pre-alpha for Marathon went, like, yeah, from my perspective, they need a win, and this would be a really good win if they could formally announce a Destiny 3. And apparently there's also another game. I don't remember another, what the code like is non for. like a non there's a non destiny non marathon project that's interesting that's floating around You're somewhere maybe that'd be cool right yeah I don't know I don't know I, I like I know this I know I'm kind of bringing a lot of uh, nuance and baggage to a group of people that maybe just like don't care that much like and that's cool if you don't that's fine. i just want to that's see not a judgment. the game um, i want to see the game I... <laughs> bring some goddamn Look, if footage. nothing else by the time final shape comes out when final shape comes out i'll show you the game i'll show Wonderful. you some because as far as i'm concerned crispy i haven't seen this game since 2018 2017 and i won't and it until is very you different until, until you show it to me it's I am, very I different never... yeah it? it's very different like warframe man. different Maybe I don't know, Warframe is wild. Warframe was like one game that turned into three games or something. Yeah. But like, yeah, kind of. I mean, it's it's got that weird trajectory. It has this weird like the entire gut, like ship of Theseus. The entire guts of the thing have been changed out so many times. That it's like, what even is this? You know, like it's certainly been a wild ride to watch, <laughs> from mm-hmm. even from an outsider's perspective. Um. Uh, oh, and Chris also Davis. Suicide oh. Squad is, like, fucking dead. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. The I Joker DLC did not save them, I guess. Yeah. So. I, think, I, think, I think it's time to just quietly... Uh... I know it sucks. I know it fucking sucks. I certainly didn't want, did not want that for, for uh, Rocksteady, Rocksteady, but goddamn. Yeah. Rocksteady yeah, needs a like ghost stuff. team. You know just, you wanted this shit to go fail. Come on. I didn't. Quiet. I didn't. I did not want Rocksteady to fail. I mean, even if it you wasn't really my bag. I, yeah. Well, no, I don't well, think I. It's a studio that I really care about, and I like this studio. Yes, the game you don't. Well, dude, but like, here's the thing: studios that I care about make games that aren't for me all the time. I don't ever you can, want wish you them can, to fail. Yeah, you can feel like it deserves to fail without necessarily wanting it to. Yeah. Like fucking Bin <laughs> Studio, the studio behind Days Gone, one of my now one of my favorite games ever, just announced that they are not making De- Days Gone two. Instead, they're making a live service game, and now I don't know how to feel about that. But do I want that to fail? Yeah, no. but when you say Days Gone two, you mean like Days Gone comma T O O. Yes. Was going to be the name of that sequel, right? <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that. Yes, hundred yes. <laughs> percent. Okay, weeks gone. Um. Anyways, Chris Davis. Uh, I guess my thing is is kind of short and sweet. Um, I'm getting the fuck out. I'm. Uh, I have put in an application for a house. Oh, uh, uh, so, 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 so put in an application. So you don't necessarily for a mortgage. 
you haven't locked it in yet. Well, you put an offer in. I, the house. I have I have sent in the earnest payment. I have. Oh, okay, so uh, you, so you have made the offer. The offer has been accepted, and you've paid the earnest the earnest money. Uh, well, I'm I'm building a house. So. Oh, oh. Shit, what? Yeah. Where? Okay. Yeah. On the east side. Wait, no, you say you're outside getting out. you of town. No, but like what? What, what outside of what side of town? Uh, very like southeast. Moving out to the country. Yes, very southeast, like yep. out by Farmland? out by the out by Isn't the airport. Horses? No, what? out by the airport, right? You're moving way out way past factory? the airport. Jesus. By the Giga Factory? Not way past the Gig Factory. No way. Yeah. You work from home? You're gonna live out on a farm? I mean, it's it's You're not gonna goats? be a farm, but it's gonna be you know a, it's a little town. We can talk about it. Off Davis, the air. you're Amish. No, no, and and I'm and it and this isn't uh, Green Acres, but I'm going to a a, a development, and uh, I'm getting out of Austin because I can't afford to live in Austin cult? anymore. So, like, I like how, I, I, so just like last week, just like Chris, da- just like la- like last week, Chris Davis was in Discord, and he was like, "Oh my God, I'm 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 getting wait, into, wait, I'm, wait. I'm shopping you, for a house." He's tired of all the libs. He's he's ready to move out to the yeah, real Texas libs. Are you Christ. moving to Bastra? <laughs> Uh no, but I did look at Bastrop. He do, he doesn't have to answer. <laughs> I mean he did. Look, Sagan? is it Sagan? <laughs> I just I, I think answer. it's funny that Chris Wild Davis was was in Discord. He was talking about how I, he's like so nervous about like I'm shopping for a house. This is gonna fucking suck. And now he's like fuck it. I'm just building. Like yeah, it's like I'm circumventing the whole like the oh, the, the bidding and like the stress of like yeah no I, yeah. Rejected. no my, my thing like, was that it. i i have been i have been watching zillow like a hawk for like six months and That's the game you cannot find a house above like 1200 square feet for anything less than three hundred thousand dollars and i was like that doesn't make sense in my head i cannot accept that so like it's just cheaper for me to build a house than to buy one. out in the country. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. Damn. I hope your YouTube that's wild. I hope your YouTube algorithm doesn't you look, look anything like, like mine. Build it with your own hands because like, you know, that would have been way cooler. I'm going out building to the it wood, with a... build a log right. cabin. Brad, shut up. Uh... <laughs> I mean I I that'd be kinda cool actually, but I hope your YouTube algorithm oh, doesn't look great. anything like mine because uh I keep getting videos from this home inspector guy that's just like showing you how like every house is just like broken and yeah <laughs> no, no, I don't pay do like hundreds of thousands of dollars to fix it after you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars i mean to buy it. no I've, i rotate well, my vpn daily so like i never get any of those kind of recommendations oh uh, well, so. get, get ready chris davis for the joys of of home ownership hey congratulations that's that's uh, pretty awesome I'm excited. It's a floor plan I like. I'm going to be build, able to build it the way I want. And I'm going to get a, a decent sized house for less than $300,000. So Room for your cats. And, and then you're going, some. To have, you're going to have a room for your cats. I didn't mean to say you have room for your cats. Of course, you're going to have room for your cats. You're going to have a room for your cats. They'll, they'll have plenty of room to run yes. about and have fun. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. That's pretty badass. Thank you get ready it's gonna be it, it's it's not the same as like bidding on a house but building is gonna have its own share of hells so probably you know, yeah but by, by the by december i should be in the house so that'll be awesome well that's exciting yeah I, we're we've t- i think the next time we i want to go back to renting i i changed my mind on this whole house ownership thing i, I hate it yeah. nah dude you're just throwing just, mm. throwing Anyways, money sorry. away just throwing money yeah, away. Yeah. yeah. Um, bad news for you, Nick. Just, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all bad news. There's no such thing as good news anymore. Yeah, Anyways. I mean, you bought a fucking condo. Like, yeah, no, that was. You bought a yeah. condo like 10 years before I could afford a house. Like. Who really that's... can afford anything? Only the banks can afford this stuff. Let's be well, real. Well, hopefully we'll all be dead in 10 years. Well, let's just, oh, let's just hope Christ. you don't. Uh, Let's just hope uh, you got good job security because, I mean, the bank's buying a house. Let's be real. Yeah. Well, okay, this t- took a turn. work in education, I'll put it that way. I should have I should have let you go last because now I feel silly just going back to talk about video games. Anyways, congratulations, Chris Davis. 
Thank you. My four player minute, I will just take an opportunity to talk about the Fallout show for a second uh, because I have been watching it um, and Robin and I are really enjoying it. We're taking it a little slow. The whole season is out, but we're watching it like one episode every day or two. So we watched episode three last night, um, or sorry, tonight, right before the show. And, uh, you know, we live in a, it's, it's just a whole, it's, it's the Wild West out there in terms of video game adaptations now. Um, you know, I, I, I was telling that it's strange because, like, I've been using Amazon for so long, and it's like, now I feel like I'm seeing, like, a tangible, like, my money is, like, paying for these really fucking expensive-looking TV shows that are, like, it's, it, it's, it's crazy to me that we now have The Last of Us and we have have something like Fallout, which is which. The, the one thing I loved about The Last of Us that I think made it so successful was just how faithful it was while also being like managing to like surprise. So like, it told the same story, but it also managed to still like surprise us in in in, in a myriad of different ways. Um, but like Fallout is telling a completely original story. It has like a very similar it has like a similar budget to The Last of Us, but it's also like jam packed with like some really ridiculous and unexpected like uh, uh, Easter eggs like like, you know, like down right down to the fucking like they use stem packs and they work just like fucking video game items in this fucking show. Like literally busts out a stem pack, like injects it into himself or like does the inhaler or whatever. And it's just like we're good there, now. There's a it's guy just, in the first episode that's running around with like the junk launcher. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like every time someone pulls out something to like eat, it has like the like it has all like the same, like just the attention to detail is crazy. Like the number of times in just the first episode alone where I was just like, oh my god, it's that, it's that, it's that. And I haven't played Fallout in like a decade. Like it's, I mean not a decade, but it's been a long time, and. Robin just finished playing like a hundred hours of Fallout Three, and she's having a blast watching it. Um, and the characters wow. are all great so far. And Crispy, Walton, have you seen it? Crispy, Walton, have you oh, seen shut it? The fuck up! Don't do this. Crispy, to him. have you seen it? <laughs> Don't do this to me, Brad. Ignore him. Video games, Ign- right, Crispy? Ignore him, Crispy. Um, look, I'm just, I'm just here to say, I, I was not really, I did not have many expectations for this, but uh, it has been very interesting so far i'm fully on board for like the story and what's happening and uh also like just they kind of nail that like bethesda like the juxtaposition of kind of like the bleak depressing nature of like what's going on in the world with like kind of that quirky lighthearted comedy that like mm. that it's they they kind of nail it yeah they they're just fucking... knocking off that twisted metal tv show I mean, I have not watched Twisted Metal. I have that's like a totally different beast. But obviously, we hear good things. About, like, in what world did you think we would have a, a a TV show based off of Twisted Metal that was not terrible? I mean, maybe it is terrible to some people. But like, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. It's it's actually really depressing. Somebody in Discord was talking about the other day. It's really depressing hearing people talk about The Last of Us, seeing people talk about Twisted Metal, seeing people talk about uh, Fallout, and then remembering the Halo TV show, which apparently is still. Like now they have a second season of it and people still kind of fucking hate it. Uh, and out of all of those shows, I feel like Halo would be kind of like the no brainer, but it's the it's the one that they just can't seem to get right for whatever reason. Um, Not a no brainer. It sounds like, you know, Halo's a ridiculous sci fi universe. No, I mean, it's not easy or cheap. Well, no, no, no. Or, I, mean, I have not watched the Halo TV show, but I hear a lot. I've heard well, the one thing I keep seeing people talk about is that apparently like the showrunner or the lead writer or whoever someone really high up in that has been like openly talking about how he didn't play the games and has no intention of playing the games. so it's just kind of like maybe missing a fundamental understanding yeah. of why people like him in the first place and the people thing that the last that of us Halo and fallout or do correctly is that like they're honoring what people like about those things and the last of us is very faithful fallout is faithful but not in the storytelling department it's telling a completely original story but like everything else around that, all the window dressing, all of the uh, the use of music, the 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 set pieces, the landscapes, just like the, just the style of writing, the all the stuff happening in the vault, because there is a story that like is happening in the vault in in Fallout, even after the main character leaves the vault, it keeps coming back and showing you what's going. Like all that stuff is fucking great. The Pip Boy, she uses 
she, she fucking uses the Pip Boy the same way you use it in the show, and it like makes a point to like yeah. show like the interface is exactly the same, and she's using it the same way you would use it in the fuck. It's just. It sounds like fan service a little bit. No, it is, yeah. but like it. But here's the. Th- you, you say you use the word fan service to describe something like that, and it automatically creates this like. Neg- negative connotation and yeah, i don't I mean think i didn't like the trigger here. i mean i i it's, would say that me. i would say the term to use is that it's fan servicey but not a detriment to the overall experience like it does not weigh in over the quality of the story i mean the i writing, think the you can do fan service Wars, fan service can be done well i mean i think the last yeah. of us had plenty of fan service and it was done well i think the same for the most part, again, I am only talking based off of the first three episodes. So, you know, it could fall apart. I have no fucking clue. But from what I've seen, the first three episodes have been fucking solid. Kyle and... won't go out. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll watch this. Damn. I don't know why Homeboy was in it. Yeah. Didn't know uh, we had a good He is a very important cast. character. Yes, he is. Right. Um, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> look, I, you know, it's you really... I mean, with Walt and Goggins, but... Dude, I, I, I mean, I think Walton Goggins is easily the highlight of the show. Um, but also uh, the main character who's uh, I don't remember her name because she's still fairly new, but she was the Walt one of the main Lucy? characters. And yeah, no, I mean, no, I know her, her, Lucy is her character's name, but the actress who plays her, she was in Yellow Jackets. And that's the only other thing I've seen her in. Um, oh, she's, great. Yellow she's great. She's um, great. Who was she in Yellow Jackets? She was the young, uh, the young girl. Well, I, I don't there's one thing I could of... say. I think it's Jackie, I think is her name. She's the young Jackie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ella Purnell. Uh, Ella Purnell, thank you. Uh, she's great. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, th- I I just didn't have a lot of expectations going into it, and it's kind of blown me away. And it's maybe done more to, like, make me want to revisit Fallout than anything Bethesda's done. Like You want to play some yeah. Fallout 76? That's the worst case no, If I go back to Fallout, it's going to be back to four, probably. Um um yeah are there any good uh like bugs or glitches uh yeah uh <laughs> i don't know how to answer that because the I know show you, I just know works crispy i it would be shocked that's pretty funny actually i would be shocked if there's not like a nod to that kind of stuff at some point it's just it's so no it's way. a big dub for Todd. He hasn't he hasn't had to win this big since Fallout yeah. Shelter. It is a big. Oh it is God. a big. It is a big. I I would say this probably qualifies. Um, yeah, dude, but fucking Walton Goggins is. Well, maybe great. if this does well, we'll get a Starfield show. Eh? Anywho, thanks for <laughs> listening to our show. <laughs> um, that's it for the, that's it for this week, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, as a reminder, we record these episodes Tuesday nights on twitch.tv slash four player podcast. So feel free to join us live. We also dual stream this on YouTube now. So if you prefer to watch on YouTube, we can, you can do that on our YouTube channel every week. And, uh, yeah, if you like the show, leave us a review, uh, hit subscribe, ring the bell or whatever the fuck. And, um, maybe most importantly, join us in our discord at discord.gg slash four player. But until next week, you guys be good to each other. Play video games. Good night.